we've got like a, at least half of the podcast to get through, and we're a state. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hello, and welcome to the tenth episode of the VXM Video Games Podcast, a conversational podcast where we discuss gaming and everything gaming related. I am your host, Rob Gisby, and joining me once again is concept artist Anthony Ulysses Pring, mm. otherwise known as the evil Lord Sauron, the necromancer, the Lord of the Prings. Bit long-winded? Uh, well, I, th- I thought I'd you know, give it some gravitas, uh. you know, because, you know, you have a majestic quality, a stature. Flattery will get you everywhere. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> um, unfortunately, uh, game designer Thomas Peregrine Kuehl can't be here. Or he couldn't be here today because he's <clears throat> getting married. Mm. Not today. No, well, not, not right now. Not as we talk. No. Soon. Very soon. This weekend, I believe. Mm-hmm. We're recording this on a Tuesday night. So, yeah, very soon. And, uh, yeah, obviously, he's got busy, busy things. He's a busy man. Leading up to the event, mm. grown up. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. But anyway, <laughs> tenth episode, which is a you know, it's a big, it's a landmark for uh. us. <coughs> <coughs> that is the sound of tenth episode victory. Yeah. We uh, we overdid it a little bit, perhaps. Mm. We have streamers. Uh, we've got party poppers. Yeah. Uh, let me just. Not my eye. Not in your eye. <laughs> just cower. <laughs> uh, we Ooh. have uh, these things. Uh, yeah, I did go a little bit overboard. <laughs> to be fair, I, you know, it wouldn't have been so stupid if there were three of us. <clears throat> it it would have been pretty sure? stupid still. Yeah, I think it would have been pretty, pretty, pretty stupid. Pretty still. stupid. Um, but it feels extra, uh, what's the word? Pathetic. Pathetic. With um, just me and you. So we got balloons as well. Um, and a camera, so you'll be able to see us looking... A bit, yeah. I mean, we're not, we're not going to video the whole thing, but, no. you know, maybe, maybe some small excerpts here and there. Uh, the Xbox reveal, Xbox One reveal, has just taken place, so we, we're sort of... <clears throat> drowning our sorrows. Uh-huh. No, no, we're, we're still talking about that. But, um... Yeah, so so we're going to talk about that a bit later, um, as well as some other gaming news. But yeah, so we we've we've got a cake as well. We have a cake, <laughs> and we're going to try ten it candles. Ten candles, and all this is stuck in my bobble. Sorry, I I, I, <laughs> I, sh- I blew my party popper load on your hat there. Yeah, that's happened many a time. Yeah, I know. It's it's not easy to get out though. That's the that's thing. That's right. That's right. We'll live. Yeah, you have to put it in there. Is it wash? Is there still more in there? Yeah, there's a bit. Oh, ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what have you been up to anyway, Ant, since, um, since last you... Uh, I see we you recorded. far too much. That is, that is true. Mm. I actually found a ginger hair in my beard the other day. Oh, I don't think I put it there, if that's uh, we, what you're suggesting. No, it grew. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm growing ginger. Uh, that's what happens when you hang out with one for mm. too much. Gingivitis, so, it's cool. That's the real reason Tom can't make it this week. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> he's just come down with a severe case. Mm. He's unable to leave his room. Imagine if that happened right before his wedding. That would be tragic. He woke up on his wedding day, ginger. Yeah. that I, I Forehead would, hair. Yeah. Oh, dear. The wedding so, would be called off, wouldn't it? Let's face it. I, If that were me, I would call it off. What, it, it, as you, you as the bride or you as the groom? Either. Either or. With with recent news, it might not be a problem soon. What are you talking about? <laughs> politics. This is a politics show, right? Uh, what politics exactly are you talking about? There's um, a debate in the House of Commons regarding gay marriage at the moment. Oh, right, OK. Sorry, I, I, I was waiting to see how this related to ginger <laughs> hair somehow. <laughs> it, it is illegal to marry a ginger as of this week. It should be. Yeah, well, no, I, 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 <laughs> no absolutely. Uh, uh. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a given, really. That you're not allowed in a church wedding at this stage, so... Well, you can't enter a church. Well, that's true. You burst so, into flames. I've seen it happen. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm. So, enough with the ginger bashing, maybe? 
Well, all right, we'll stop for now. We'll, we'll, we'll get the rest. <laughs> I can only hold off for so long. <laughs> I'm still picking up my hat. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing. Oh, but... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, what have you been playing this week uh, or in the past fortnight, rather, young Anthony? Uh, oh, what did we do? We played a bit of Fuse. Yeah, we did. Yeah, the, we, um, we had a little. Demo. We had a little go at the Fuse demo. What did you think? Um, it's we only played a tiny bit. Mm. I mean, we played the full demo, but it wasn't particularly. It's not long. No, it wasn't long, but. Graphically, it's mostly goodish, okay. It's, but it's not horrible to look at. No, it? but um, it did have some particularly bad graphical uh, shortcomings. The, the, the first, the most prominent of which was the fire in it. The fire was yeah. a joke. It, yeah, it, it was, was it was like PlayStation One style fire. Like, I, yeah, I, I genuinely shocked. I mean, we, oh, we couldn't stop laughing. No, the fire. Did we? Did we go back again and look at it and see what it looked like one player? Yeah, I we did. Remember. I think we did. We, I don't did, know if we yeah. got all the way to that fire part again, but like, but the gameplay, you know, it was <clears throat> it was fine. It was quite clunky. Mm, I found um, it quite cumbersome. Yeah, I got to say. And <clears throat> the first class I played was the the sniper class because you got your four classes each with their yeah, unique. Yeah. So, so moves. for those of you who don't know, Fuse is a Four player co op sh- third person shoot cover based shooter, and basically each of your four characters has a different sort of skill set. One is the sniper, one is like a short range shotgun kind of person, one is like a sort of assault rifle, and one is like a tank yeah. who sort of so it borrows from kind of the four fundamental classes, you know, in an MM- MMO or mm. any cooperative. You know, obviously, the better you are at utilising the four different classes, you know, if you can stick behind your tank when he uses his shield, yeah. and you can, you know, if you, everyone's playing their classes to their... Uh, You've got to, to play to the character's yeah. strengths, basically. But the interesting ability, obviously, is the... As a player, I don't I don't think it'll be capable in, with four players, but when with any less than that, you can switch into the empty... Classes. Yeah, basically, <clears throat> we played the demo just me and Ant together, and there's so there was me and Ant, and then two AI players. And when you're not, uh, you can switch from your character into any of the AI characters sort of instantaneously. Yeah. So if if say you're sort of wading through guys and there's a sniper up top, you can switch from whichever character you are to the sniper quickly to make sure that you take him out and then switch and back to carry back, on. Yeah. So that's really cool, and I have, I, to my knowledge, I haven't seen that happen in a lot of other games. No, um, but we both, you know, we, we both agree. <clears throat> this mechanic, when you die, you, you start to bleed out, or when you get, you reach zero health, you bleed out, you start crawling around, and then you can go and assist your teammate if you're not the person dying. Oh yeah, get, yeah. But the mechanic where you switch into the empty class, you can't do while you're bleeding out. Yeah. So, so if you get taken down. You can't then switch out of your character and go into one of the AI characters and, and come and heal yourself, and, yeah. which is really bad. Like I, I can't. <clears throat> if you, we were playing co-op, so I can kind of understand there. But if you're playing on your own and you've got those three characters spare, and you you know there's a an opportunity for you to switch into the other one. Get you know if you want to play risk reward and you get him with the shotgun, kill an enemy. But if one if you die, it's one of the characters, and then you can't switch. I mean, maybe you can in single player, but I doubt it. Well, we didn't try it out, but <clears> I, <throat> I, 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 doubt, I doubt that's the case. It'd be strange to have the option with one extra player, but not on your own. Mm. I, and you, you know, you, then you have to sit there and wait for one of the AI to to come and get you. Yeah, and the AI it seemed seems... okay, but it didn't seem overly reliable it didn't, yeah, it didn't or advanced. Me. No, the scripting was quite obvious. You could, you could you, as soon as you, you bleed out, it triggers the nearest one and it runs over to you. Yeah. And there's no intelligent thought behind it. You know, you can't keep. If 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 it was you and you had your sniper covering you and you had the risk, you know, the shotgun guy, um, that was further away but less necessary, you could switch into the shotgun guy, run back, and still be covered by your sniper. Mm. But in this case, it just scripts 
whoever's closest to come and get you, and that can cause more problems. I just think it was a wasted opportunity there. <clears throat> yeah, to no, have a cool little, you know. And and the end, as far as the enemies go, they were entirely unremarkable, just nondescript soldiers, grunts. Yeah, all at the same. Um, um, one of the cool things I did like about it was the melee moves. Like, if you get close to an enemy, you can tap Y or whatever, and mm. you do like a really awesome sort of melee takedown. And some of them were really Pretty violent. Brutal, yeah. yeah. But uh, even so, I, I remember I did. Uh, they're really clumsy. It was just felt really clumsy. It's very, yeah, uh, very clumsy, know. very clunky. I like. I think reviews are going to start to come out for this very shortly, and I can't see it doing particularly well. I can't. I can't see it doing above a se- seven, sixes, and sevens. No, to me, if I mean, there might be engagement or, or character development or something that That's kind true. of brings you yeah. in later in the game. But from what we played, it looked. Quite repetitive. Yeah, like, you know. entirely average, really. Um, and something else that annoyed me, as I was going to say earlier, the, the sniper guy. You, you have a button that you hold down, don't you, to, to look down the sights. Mm-hmm. But with the sniper class, you have to hold down the button to look through the the sight, and then press another button to zoom through yeah, the scope. Yeah. And I just thought it it just seemed. Unnecessary, unnecessary yeah, yeah I, it just felt <clears throat> unnatural to me I know it's only a small thing but it just really bugged me mm. when I played but I, I really do like that sort of switching between your various classes mechanic and I think mm. other games it's a cool could, w- could adopt that in yeah. the future it is really I, I thought that that was the one thing about it that I thought was really interesting I thought it was cool and, plus and I it, mean they did have all the fuse weapons and, and fuse you know is this game, sort yeah. of extraterrestrial Sort of, um, it's, it's this unlimited energy source that the government or whatever have discovered or or created that is by the sounds of it is what the entire narrative is set around, yeah. And they know. managed to sort of weaponize it and <clears throat> integrate it into your specific weapons so that your tank guy he's got like a sort of a big, like magnum esque pi- pistol kind of thing and he can get this big sort of force field in front of him th- that you can then shoot through and like take cover behind. But enemies can't shoot through. It's quite. Um, if you ever played, if you've played Halo Four, the 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 shield that you get on that, yeah. you know, one of the perks on there, it's pretty similar. It's bigger, yeah. obviously. Create, you know, for like the a big, of hiding big your sort team of behind horizontal yeah. rectangle. And then uh, you've got your sniper, who's got mm-hmm. like a big crossbow, and um, yeah. though he can sort of shoot like bolts that will set guys on fire and things like that, right? Mm. And then you've got you know, the, this girl with an assault rifle and her assault rifle creates sort of a small singularity, like a black hole that mm. will like suck enemies in and destroy them. So it has like an area of effect. Yeah, area of effect. <laughs> and then the last one, this other girl has like um, this sort of rifle that will sort of freeze people in this sort of black, weird I don't think I played that thing. one. Yeah, and, then yeah, it, yeah. and then you can shatter them. So it sort of like freezes them and then shatters them. I didn't see that one. I think it might be called the shatter gun, but it, it was really cool. Like those weapons are awesome. The weapons were cool. And Insomniac have always had really interesting weapons in Resistance and mm-hmm. Ratchet and Clank. You know, they, they've that's something that they've always done well. But I feel like I feel like people are too. Uh, they like Insomniac just a bit too much, like sort of PlayStation fanboys and stuff. Like because mm-hmm. I thought Resistance and Ratchet and Clank, and I prefer Ratchet and Clank, and I do I really like the characters, but the gameplay is it's, it's, right. it's fine. It's, it's, it's fine. Your average three D platformer. It didn't it didn't do anything that yeah. set it apart. And, and Resistance. Uh, to mm. me, like I came to it late, and I just f- found it to be both Resistance really and Killzone were a disappointment to yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. But having said that, I haven't given Resistance a huge amount of time, and I will definitely at some point. Uh, mm. So this is just early impressions, but I think also because they were both set up so as you know the, the Halo beta or you know the, the exactly, new yeah. reigning champion. You know, I came to games. to PlayStation uh, wanting to play exclusives and. Uh, I was just, you know, because coming from like Halo and Gears of War, which are both, you know, really top of top mm-hmm. class shooters, I'd say, um, as, you know, compared, especially compared to like Resistance and Killzone, it, it, it was a disappointment for me. But um, uh, on top of that, I think you've okay. So it's not the case with Fuse, but um, the three hundred and sixty controller is more suited for shooters. Absolutely, I feel, yeah. you know. 
And 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 I think in I'm not sure, but in both Killzone and Resistance, you actually shoot on the R1. On yeah, not on the trigger. Instead of the trigger, yeah. and like there's a flimsy little trigger isn't it no so. I know but I, I, I don't know how much difference that would have made I think it makes a huge difference I, th- I don't think you realise how much of a difference no it no makes. I mean in terms of using R1 instead of R2 rather than just because it's I know the trigger's not good but you know mm. um, I, 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 for me the controller you can play the same game it could even look nicer on the on the PS3 but the controller makes a, a massive difference sure yeah absolutely <clears throat> Is that all you played this week, really? Apart from a little bit of Halo. I played a bit of Halo. What else did we... I'm sure we played something else. Uh, you played a lot of... Uh, that yeah, I played, I've played. i played quite a lot this week because I have done fuck all mm-hmm. uh, in terms of work. I've, yeah. I've really let things slide this week and uh, just been playing a bunch of games. So I've played uh, Guacamelee, mm. uh, which is a PS3 Vita sort of cross-buy, cross-play. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's one of my contenders for Game of the Year. Um, so far, like I saw you play it a bit, and I saw I've seen footage online. Yeah, and the, gra- the the art style is lovely. Yeah, like, it is really, nice. really. It's basically a sort of a side-scrolling platformer by Drinkbox Studios. It's it's got this really kind of nice. Um, hey, they did the Alien, the Blobs, is that they're called something, something like that. Blob, yeah. yeah, and uh, is it Mutant Blobs Attack? Is that the game? I don't, I don't something know. Blobs I Attack. Don't know. Yeah, but. Um, but this is like basically you, you start off as like some sort of farmer in, in set in Mexico or something and like <laughs> and like you uh you become like a what do they call those re- wrestlers luchadors luchador luchador <laughs> yeah and uh like basically you you uh you i mean the story is kind of relatively bare bones but the humor is really funny throughout and then you you get like Spoilers. You, it's not really a spoiler. You get like killed like straight away, um, and by these sort of people from the land of the dead. It's like the day of the dead, and they're celebrating it. And these mm. sort of ghouls or whatever come up, phantoms, phantoms, yeah, ghosts or whatever they are. They come up and try to take over the world of the living, and you get killed really quickly. And then you get this sort of magical luchador mask, and then you have to go rescue your love interest or whatever. And so it's, you, you know, crazy. Yeah, kind of really colourful, really fun, and you kind of use all like wrestling, brawling moves to like fight all these like skeleton enemies I, and things. It's really cool. It looks. I, yeah, I'm going to get it. I, I, it's really I'm good. A, I'm a big fan of a platformer done well. There's a lot of them recently, and and a lot of our generation. Uh, indie devs are, you know, living up their past, and but th- there are some great ones that still shine through. And, and Drinkbox look like they've, they've mm. made something really special. I with mean, this. the platforming is really good in it, and the fighting is also really good. It's got like quite beat 'em up yeah, qualities. I didn't see you play it, but I saw a bit online, and it uh, flashing things. It's and, lots of yeah. combos and looks, things like that. It looks cool, but yeah. it's combos in a way that I can kind of get it and I'm not good at combo kind of games really it's and not Ninja Gaiden then no no uh, but and, and what's really interesting is you can kind of switch between the land of the living and the dead mm. sort of seamlessly and, yeah so and you have to use it to solve puzzles so in the land of the living and the dead the architecture is slightly different and you can kind of get to different places and then as you progress you learn all these moves and you use them to get navigate you know and move further on it's like an open world yeah when I saw you, you were in some form of hub world. Yeah, looked, yeah. there's a couple of like towns that you can explore, cool. and there's side quests that you can find. That's really you know, cool. I, I, I won't say like too much more about it, but it's really good. And honestly, if if you're a fan of platformers, um, this is a must buy. Mm-hmm. Like, and and if you've got a Vita, you know, it's it's cross buy, cross play, all of that kind of stuff. And you know, it's not particularly long. I think it took maybe seven hours or something. I don't know how much longer you'd want from a platformer, though. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but the, once you complete it, you do you do unlock like a hard mode and stuff. So there is sort of a re- replayability there, and the bosses are brilliant. And the humor is there's a lot of mm. really funny stuff. Like you learn special moves from a bloke that turns into a goat. And he's Brilliant. like going on about how he wants to date your mum and stuff. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. Um, other than that, I be uh, I played Sound Shapes, which oh, yeah. is um, sort of this weird musical platformer. And basically, you're like a tiny little blob, mm. and you sort of navigate your way through these various 
sort of platformy levels and collecting these tiny like orb circle type things mm. and each so you start off and the, the music is very sparse very sort of bare and then the more of the circles you collect the more musical elements are sure. added to the soundtrack yeah. so you're constantly building up the music making it more dynamic and it's constantly evolving as you add these things and who did the soundtracks? Um, of oh, quite a few different people have done them, but the the sort of uh, the the worlds or the stages are arranged into albums. So you've got one album by like Jim Guthrie, and then there's one by Dead Mouse, one by Beck. Uh, there's another couple as well. I can't I can't remember off the top of my head, but cool. Um, yeah, it's really cool, and and along with these different uh, musical artists. Different actual artists provide the artwork for each of the backgrounds of the album. So, oh, okay. for example, you have a specific artist who does the Beck stuff, a specific one who does the Dead Mouse stuff. So, yeah. all of the backgrounds are really different and varied. Right. Uh, and, like, each album has, like, a really different tone to the last. And, um, and like, by the time you get to sort of the Beck stuff, which is towards the end, it's really psychedelic and. Uh, and the R's come up in clouds. Yeah, and, quite yeah. overwhelming. Um, to play in a really good, in a sort of a really positive way. Um, um, the, the only thing, that, I mean, it was good. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd, it had been hyped up a lot to me, so I think it didn't right. quite measure up to what I'd heard about it. Um, I mean, it's, it's an interesting concept, one that's, you know, kind of with games like Vib Ribbon and, you know, environments that react to the music. Yeah. It's not an original idea, but it seems like it's taken quite an original approach to it. Yeah, I mean, it blends sort of more traditional platforming. It's not a particularly hard game, mm. but if you want to completely build these songs up, you have to find all these things, and some of them. So, can you if you can you get from one part of the level to the next to the end without getting these? Oh orbs? yeah, so technically you could. Yeah. You so could. effectively, you're setting your own difficulty level. I suppose, but there is there is sort of a, a death challenge mode or something that you get right. after. Which is just really, really hard platforming stuff, okay. which is just fucking face melting. It's just awful. Like it's so hard. It, it's <laughs> like a meat boy. It's like proper okay. sort of thumb blistering stuff. Like, I like that. I like that. Yeah, it's really difficult. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't complete all of them. No, <laughs> I might go back and do it. I, to be fair, I didn't spend that much time on it. I kind of really wanted to move on, and then. Uh, the next game that I did move on to after that was um, Tokyo Jungle, mm-hmm. which uh, is we played a bit of it. Earlier. Yeah, we we did play a bit of it. Mm-hmm. It's 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 sort of a really really weird. Um, There's definitely you wouldn't. You, it's not a premise that's been explored already, is it? Not it's, really. It's sort of a survival game, and and the premise is sort of like all the humans have disappeared uh, from Tokyo, and then ten years later sort of nature is starting to reclaim the city and it's just about all these animals that live in the city and like about how you have to you have to play as as one of these animals and survive in the city so like you start off as a little pomeranian and (laughs) and like uh and basically you have to mark your territory bang a bitch have some kids and then like you're constantly um moving through the environment and you have to hunt your food and you know make sure you're high you, you know you're drinking and whatnot and uh and it's it's really weird it is it's is really it weird is. and then and then and then you know as you play through you're unlocking more animals who could be rabbits cats monkeys giraffes all this weird shit like and um giraffes <laughs> <laughs> i can't i yeah i obviously we played a, a for a small, you know, ten minutes, but I, I really want to get my hands on and uh, kind of get into it because it looks completely. Crazy. It's bonkers, yeah. yeah. It's fucking bonkers. Like, it's, there's, it's not like there's no realism in it. No, it's I like mean, you're you can... a Pomeranian and you're like fucking taking down like a massive crocodile or yeah. like a hyena or a tiger or something. And you can dress yourself up, which yeah. I think is phenomenal. You can like wear little shades and <laughs> like little, you know, a mini skirt or something that gives you buffs and. St- stats and things and then you can like level up as you go and it's it's really weird and and then like 
it's sort of open world and, and various areas of the city can get polluted and then so you have to like you're constantly forced to move on to new and more dangerous regions as you play mm. so basically you have to survive for as long as you can um, and there is a story mode there is a story mode but 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 to unlock both new animals and story missions you have to play survival mode so right. you're constantly sort of flitting between the two modes which I like because you're not getting too bored of one mode yeah, or, yeah. yeah exactly and it's um, and the actual missions like I played one last night and it was something like you're, you're a beagle and <laughs> you want to take over like a territory <laughs> of like these sort of bulldog looking things right. so so in order to do that you have to build a beagle army so you, <laughs> so you have to like mate yeah, and then just like just, you know, I'm not sure that I do, but <laughs> what <Well, laughs> you have to you have to mate and like, you know, yeah, I know put, 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 lay some tile. I don't know if that's a thing. Is that is that is that banging or is that shitting? I think it's shitting. Don't lay some tile. That's the wrong thing to do or, in this situation. Or, or, or is it? I've not actually heard the phrase. Uh, I. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. You basically have to <laughs> make beagles. enough babies, yeah, mm-hmm. so that you can build up an army of beagles and then take Storm it to the these. Bulldogs. Yeah, I don't think they are bulldogs, but they look kind of like bulldogs. And and then you have to sort of like take you know uh, take over their territory and run them out of this area of town or whatever. And it's it, and the stories are quite. Some of them are really sad, and it's quite a sad game, really, because like. You know, you're just trying to survive, and then you're just constantly getting like ragged yeah. on. It's a, uh, it's, it's some real shit. <laughs> well, it's not real. It's just ridiculous. Like <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't wait to get involved. Yeah, it's really good. Like, I mean, I, it, I don't think it's for everyone, and it's like, no. I, well, it's, uh, it's good, not great, mm. but it's just so unique that I think that if you are a PlayStation owner and, and you've got you know some spare cash it's, it's worth you a try something new yeah it is, it is they're very different right um, I mean it's not the nicest looking game it's no not, it's not know. the graphics are sort of almost last gen um, they're obviously they're HD so they but it could easily you know any it HD it looks remake, better than the Wii um, yeah well <laughs> that doesn't say a huge amount no um, no, it's not horrible looking. It, it doesn't dis- it doesn't you know distract no. you while you're playing. Which it's not too games. bad, uh, apart from when it in some of the story missions it will like zoom in on your animals and then it looks quite bad. Mm. But like it's it's just a really cool game and like it's it's really how it's, much was it? Uh, about in seven quid or something. Like I don't, you know, who knows? It might come up on PlayStation Plus or something soon. Because in Japan, it was actually a, a, box a retail and retail, yeah. yeah. Which uh, I can't imagine paying for that as a retail game. No, no. Oh, I think it was a while ago. I think they've, yeah. you know, just trying to squeeze a bit extra money out of it out of a Western audience. Well, it's by Studio Japan, Japan, Japan. Oh, Japan. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's, it. that's how you pronounce it. So, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, and and they make some cool games. Like, um, have you seen that one that they're making? And it's about some kid that can only be seen when it's raining. No, it sounds gr- it sounds interesting. It, it yeah. sounds good already, yeah. right? So it's like this 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 kid's invisible, and he's chasing after an invisible this little boy. He's chasing after an invisible girl, but you can only see them when he's walking through the rain. So. And and there's all these like invisible monsters around and stuff. It's really cool. Like Sounds I can't cool. remember what it's called, but you have to look, have to look it up. It's really interesting. But um, yeah, that's what I've been playing. You haven't played anything else at all. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I haven't had a huge amount of time to spare, and the, the time I have spared, um, have been sat in the Halo Four server uh, matchmaking lobbies, crying that crying it's not working and shouting and. Also, my Xbox is about to die. This next generation can't come soon enough because it's going to blow up anytime soon. You could actually hear my Xbox whirring over the mic, and, and I, I wasn't sat next to it. Yeah. No, so, we were um, playing Halo, and I was just like, yeah. what is that sound? It sounds like you're hoovering. I know. It, it's awful. I, can't, I have to have the, the sound on the TV really, really loud. loud yeah. just to, but um, no, other than that, I haven't really had a chance to play I, 
I started um, Dragon's Dogma last podcast, oh, but yeah. I haven't gone back to it yet. Um, when I get a bit more time, I think I might have a bash, but I've still got Dishonored to go back to. Yeah. Um, and there are a few titles I'd like to revisit, but we'll see. I've got quite a lot to get out of the way before this next generation comes in. Absolute moan, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know where that came from. Oh, just before we talk about gaming news, um, we've both been to see the new Iron Man film recently. Oh, Not yeah. together. No. Um, because otherwise we wouldn't have seen any of it because obviously we'd been making out in the back seat. Um, All of it. As as the American people say. <laughs> oh man, we would have been making out like crazy. Uh, <laughs> is that what they say? <laughs> I'm sure I don't, that. I don't think they say like crazy. Like, like mad? Like No, no that's very English. And oh, is it like... Like getting off like mad, mate. Um, like dope? I... Anyway... <laughs> Uh, so we saw uh, Iron Man 3 uh, recently, and I think we both sort of feel the same way about it. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, I mean, I enjoyed it, thought it was, you know, a cool film, a decent film, but, and it was certainly better than the second one. Well, that doesn't take a lot. No. I thought, I thought the, the dip in everything from the first one to the second one was... Just stupid. Like that was one of the biggest disappointments I've ever had was with the second. But Avengers kind of brought it back up again, and I thought it was. I thought Avengers was quite Iron Man centric. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I think and Downey Jr. just totally kills it. Yeah, I can't. It, even in the second even film, in the second it, one, it wasn't I, his fault. I can't imagine anyone else playing Tony Stark. No. Other than he, he was born for that role. But after Avengers. Three was a disappointment for me. I knew, I knew what I knew it was going to be, the um, like Mandarin storyline. Yeah. Um, but it still wasn't what I was expecting. No, it, I, I think the film was a bit, bit silly. It was a bit silly. It but was. Then Marvel films usually are. Yeah. I, I think they're a bit silly, and I don't think that it necessarily should I, be criticised. It, it's funny, that. isn't it? Like. W- obviously, it's silly. It's about sort of superheroes and yeah. crazy shit like that. But what I mean is. That side, mm. I just still thought it was a bit... And I, I enjoy the comedy in those, but, you know. Uh, and the special effects were amazing. Yeah, um, flawless. Downey Jr. still killed it. Even though I, I do feel he's be- almost become kind of a parody of his own creation, character-wise. I, he's, still, he's, still, he's still brilliant. Yeah. Um, and did, did, you, did you notice there's a huge plot hole? There's a few... Oh, for you. Okay. Well, there, there was one that, that came to mind. I won't, I won't go into details. But no, no, obviously, we don't want to say too much. It's, yeah. it's, it's a very new film, but, you know, I, and I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I also went to go see the new Star Trek, that which yet. I thought was really good. It was great. Okay. Like, and, uh, well, when, when I saw your analysis of Iron Man it, it summed up in your one kind of... Little Facebook Facebook status, status, it, yeah. it, it, it was exactly what I'd been saying about it, so... If you're recommending Star Trek, I'd say it's it a better film. But then I am a, uh, I I'm not a bit so much of a comic guy, no. uh, but I am a sort of a Star Trek, the original series and fan. The thing so. is, uh, comic, you know, drawn images translating in, into film, then they don't go flawlessly. No. You know, you ha- it's an adaption for a reason. You know, you there, there is going to be changes made, and it's going to have to be made for it to work as a film. You know, well, it's the same with Star Trek, you know, adapting a TV series into there a is definitely with new a actors. Difference. And... There is definitely a difference, but it's less of uh, divided mediums. Sure, yeah. So, you, obviously it's reimagined and f- filled with lens flare. But, <laughs> I don't know, is it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. So, uh, there, yeah. there is, it's very rare that a lens isn't flaring in that film. But he said he was going to tone it down. He said, I, I read, I think it was Empire, he said, yeah, I did go over the top with it. Uh, he, he actually had um, guys s- on the set, standing around the set with torches, really? shining it into the... Because you, you make the lens, they don't put them in. I afterwards. thought, I, I just assumed that they put them in afterwards. No, he, he, a lot of people do, but he said he wanted to actually create the lens flares. <clears throat> so he had guys, you know, 
parts of his team literally hiding in places so off camera with torches. It, if they have, do they have like different bulbs in to create the different yeah. colour lens fest? Amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh, they have different bulbs, they have different um, like focuses, like all, all sorts of different things. Obviously, depending on what lens, you know, it's going to yeah. be a prime lens. lens but, okay. you know. Well, well, let's not get too techie into this, otherwise... Uh... Sure, but we got off subject. Basically, I, I thought Iron Man was... It's worth a watch if you love the, the Marvel franchise. If you enjoyed Avengers, if you enjoyed the first one. Oh, I'd say it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah, like, go go watch it. It's cer- um, it's it's certainly better than the second one, and it's got some really cool scenes. Yeah. You know, but it is let down in places by stupid plot holes and nonsensical characters that don't need to be there other than to explain yeah. a bit of backstory. Which I, I heard that the was... bloke who wrote it. The only reason he was involved in the project was because he wrote it on spec and then just sent it in and said, this is what the third Iron Man film should be. And they were like, yes, You're do that. No, no, that's, that's... I think he's English. Well, I don't think that if, whether that's anything to judge someone on, a credential or otherwise, but... No, but that just goes to show, you know, what you can get if you ask for it, I suppose. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. Um... So if anyone's listening, um, I would send really... in your scripts to Marvel. Well, no, I was going to say I'd really like a car. Uh, oh. So, you know, I'd or like a, two, or a bike, or a plane, or a <laughs> girlfriend, perhaps. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow morning you're going to wake up. Not tomorrow morning, but after this goes out, what with a girl just coming a in a big parcel, yeah, <laughs> unwrap it, just a dead corpse. <laughs> yeah, they always forget the air holes. A dead yeah. corpse as opposed to an alive corpse. Shut up, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always the way. Yeah. Um, gaming news. Game Moving news. on to the gaming. Oh, oh, oh. oh okay. Oh. <laughs> First story. Yeah, well, we'll get we'll get to the Xbox stuff uh, very shortly. But I'm just gonna uh, reel off some announcements cool. and release dates. I'll um, jump in if I hear anything. Oh yeah. Otherwise, oh, I'm, you'll hear some shit. I'm uh, not with my fingers in my ears. No. no. Um. So, the first thing is... Oh, oh God, Jesus fucking Christ. hell. <laughs> Shit. That hurt my I know, be careful, they burn. I tell, I'm telling you. What the fuck are uh, these? There's, like, loads of gunpowder in it. <laughs> Jesus. Keep away from eyes. Do not dismantle. Comply with BS <laughs> 7114 Part 2, 1988. Does it, does it say don't ingest anywhere on them, or do they just assume know, that that's... Fucking hell. Yeah, be careful. They they, they burn. My ears as well. <laughs> I know. <laughs> God, I think my phone's going to explode. Sorry. Sorry about that, listeners. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, so basically, okay... First announcement, Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures has been announced. Have you seen anything about this, Anne? No, it sounds awful. You really don't want to. Basically, it's an anthropomorphic Pac-Man, and it's like a... How can you anthropomorphise a circle with a chunk? Oh, (laughs) God. (laughs) I think he would look reasonably okay if he didn't have that massive bulbous nose. What's with the eyebrows? Mate, I don't even... Uh, I, that's and your question. Teeth. That is your question. Of all the fucking questions. What's with the eyebrow? <laughs> and why have you given him teeth? I haven't given him teeth. Why are you saying it? In fact, his eyes look more like he does. He should. Yeah, that's true. Um, but anyway, basically, it is this sort of 3D platformer um, action game releasing for Xbox 360, PS3, Wii U and PC uh, this autumn. And there's a side-scrolling companion game coming to the 3DS, and it is fucking weird. Uh, it's sort of... It looks a bit ratchet and clanky. It looks like trash. It looks like... Even the concept sounds fucking atrocious. Yeah, and... Basically, um... It, it, he just... He goes around still eating enemies and stuff like eating vending machines just like running around this like space city or whatever right it looks awful but you know thought i'd better mention it just because (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah so um who's publishing it uh i just who cares who cares yeah move on uh something that people might actually give a shit about not me but um gran turismo 6 has been announced cool um uh, and it's being developed for the PlayStation 3 specifically, as of as of now. Um, oh. 
which I think is probably a good move. Like, yeah, because Drive Club is coming out on PS4. Yeah, so I guess they don't want to yeah. compete within them. You know. Yeah. I guess that, I, I guess I can see that. Um, and um, it was announced recently at the sort of 15 years of Gran Turismo event at Sil- Silverstone, UK. Uh, down the road, much love. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh, and uh, I mean, there has been um, a tiny bit of talk about uh, a PS4 version, but nothing's been officially announced. I'm sure that it, perhaps down the road it will come to PS4. Sure. Okay. Uh, but well, not everything is about next generation. You no, know, no, exactly. The golden uh, end. Apparently, the game will have two hundred more cars than Gran Turismo Five, uh, with uh, one thousand two hundred available at release. Wow, that is a, quite a lot of cars that they. That's got a lot of cars. That is a lot of cars indeed, and um, it will launch with thirty three locations, seventy one course layouts, uh, nineteen of which will be brand new. Um, and then there'll be tons of DLC, apparently. So, uh, okay, it doesn't, well, you know, it doesn't say exactly when it's going to come out, but I expect there'll be uh, more info um, around E3. So, but it is this year. Oh, oh yeah, I think it'll be this year. Okay. Um, for PC gamers, Total War Rome Two has been. Uh, I saw this actually. Release yeah. has been announced. Um, Sega obviously publishing um, these Total War games. Uh, I reckon they're probably one of their biggest franchises. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, Especially on PC. Well, it's only on PC, but <laughs> for PC, I mean. Yeah, and it will be <clears throat> available across the world from September the 3rd, uh, both physically and digitally. Uh, pre-orders are now being taken, and anyone who uh, pre-orders them will get um, Greeks, uh, a Greek states culture DLC for free. Um, right. Pff, don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Have you ever played any of the Rome games? I, I haven't played any Total War games. I'm not really a PC guy, but my brother and my dad both like them. Um, but they're, they're quite fans of strategy and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Not really. No, I mean, I know what they're like. Yeah. I've seen them being played, but yeah. I'm not, I've not really... <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm not, we're not really driving people or, or, or uh, strategy <laughs> people, so we've got fuck all to say on this stuff. Yeah. But yeah, you know, if, you, if you're interested then, there's plenty of uh, articles and whatnot. Another game that we know fuck all about, WWE 2K14 has been announced, uh, release date, rather. I mean, the thing is, I've always been able to relate to big guys with little pants, um, lots of oil, um, and chairs, so this I, game's for me. I like really. chairs. I, I'm sitting on a chair right now. Uh, so am I. You know what? I am sitting on a chair right now as well. And I can see a few chairs. I know. I know. And I I've got to say, I'm happy that there are other chairs, yeah. just in case. Just in case, exactly. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, um, moving on from chairs. Um, Take Two, uh, who are now publishing uh, the WWE games after THQ went down the pan, yeah. uh, they are have confirmed that the game will be released on October the 29th, um, For... with only Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 currently listed, but okay. I expect there'll be probably... somewhere down the line. Yeah, exactly. There'll be some next-gen versions. We, okay. and this is one of the only... Uh, sort of sports franchises that EA hasn't got their grubby little mitts all over mm. at the moment. Well, Take Two are huge. Oh yeah. So, uh, probably one of the financially one of the biggest competitors to E three uh, to E three to EA. So, um, in fact, don't be so stupid, Ant. Uh, <laughs> don't cry. <laughs> Not going to get anywhere crying. Uh, fact, <laughs> oh, I think I think they are the biggest money lots. Don't know what that sentence was supposed to be. <laughs> big money lots. <laughs> this, this is you like doing uh, an impression of a wrestler. Big money <laughs> lots, choke slam. <laughs> is that a move? I don't know. I, it's a move. Is it? Oh, it's a move. I, I used to watch wrestling when I was a kid. Did you? Okay. Well, I've never. It's never been a thing that I've liked or cared about. Yeah, I do like chairs though. I do like. <laughs> yeah. we, I think we've established that at this point. Um, so that's all we've got to say about that. 
Uh, I hope that uh, you appreciate that, listeners. Uh-huh. Uh, Killzone Mercenary is coming to the PS Vita earlier than expected. Um, uh-huh. And, I mean, it looks this looks good. Like They always do, though. I think the kill zones always look great. Before. Oh, oh no, no! I just meant in terms of like visuals on the Vita, you know, like it, it, oh, okay. it looks, it looks decent, you know. Um, and uh, apparently, it was originally planned for release on September the seventeenth in North America, September the eighteenth in Europe, mm. but it will now launch on the fourth of September in Europe and September the sixth in Why the UK. Why did they bring it forward? And then tenth in North America. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why that um, they've moved it forward. You know, it's not. It's not but a huge. It's probably. Amount. It's probably just to get out of the way of GTA Five. That's what right. everyone's been doing, okay. right? Um, which Fair is enough. coming out on the September the seventeenth. But like from what I've seen, I mean, this game looks really gorgeous on the Vita. Um, uh, it's 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 a shame that it hasn't sold more. Really, I mean, it is a pretty incredible console to have in your hands. Oh yeah, you know. yeah absolutely. I, I really do want one. I, I I want a Vita and I want a 3DS, but I just don't have uh, the money I mean I, I don't have money for next gen consoles at the moment so yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll wait for the price tags I, 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 I'm intrigued to see how good this compatibility and remote play between the PS4 and the Vita is going to be absolutely if it is flawless then I'll think about investing in one because hopefully by then they'll have dropped or there'll be bundle deals or yeah no absolutely you know, and <laughs> I, I mean there's uh, I mean this game looks really cool and uh, so, I mean, so far, the two big shooters on the Vita have both sucked massive donkey balls. Ooh, which are? Uh, the Resistance one oh, yeah. and the Call of Duty one. I haven't played that. I've heard some pretty diabolical... They were both games. made by the same developer. I can't remember who they are off the top of my head, but right. they are fucking useless. Uh. And uh, they basically spent, like, six months developing, like, each of them respectively, and they were just trash, so... And that's a real shame, like especially with something like Call of Duty, which has got that cachet and name brand. I know Resistance has to a lesser extent, mm. but it just it seems really sad that they're not sort of taking care of their their franchises and their brands. I just think know. they're missing a huge opportunity. There is no other console, there is no other portable console that's bringing you first person shooters. In, you know, no, you, you, in this way, not, the DS is never really going to cater for that sort of thing. Not hugely. And it's going to require a lot of funding. And, you know, it's going to be a first-party studio, maybe a Metroid adaptation, I don't know. Yeah, I can't really imagine that 3DS owners would be, like, clamouring for a gritty first-person shooter. The audience is not going to be there. I wouldn't buy 3DS in the hope of a first-person shooter. But the Vita is more than capable of doing it. You know, I, I... They've got that market well, to themselves. Well, they've got the dual analogues for a they, start. Exactly. They've got the they've got the they've got the market to themselves. Okay, it's not perfect. <clears> it's not the 360 controller, but they could take their time. They're not in any rush to get one out. They could get fun in behind that, it's, and they could have a. Really it's one of those cycles, isn't it? It's like people aren't going to buy it because it doesn't have the games, but then developers aren't going to develop for it because no one's buying it, right? And it's mm. so you and but but. This Killzone Mercenary is under development at Sony's own uh, at Sony owned Guerrilla Cambridge, which was formerly Sony Cambridge, yeah. and that is a proper, like, well respected developer. So definitely, it's not like these other ones that were outsourced to this dodgy <laughs> studio. That right, yeah. it, it's like a, it, it looks to be the real deal so far. I'm excited. I'll definitely yeah. keep my eyes on it. Um, and another Vita title, uh, which uh, has been gestating for a long time, is Ratchet and Clank: Full Frontal Assault, mm-hmm. uh, which came out on the PS3 several months ago. Um, it's called uh... "Fuck Me in the Face." Strange title for a uh, game. No, 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 wait. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's got a different title in England, right? And it's much less cool than Full Frontal Assault. Which sounds a is it bit rapey, or but it's uh, uh, in England. I don't know if it's got a different name in Europe, but it's called. Uh... <sighs> Equally bizarre. <name. laughs> I can't remember what it's called, but it's not called Full Frontal the Okay. Uh, oh, it's called Ratchet and Clank Q Force. Q Force. I don't know. Right, okay. I don't know. But the adaptation for uh, Vita is going to be called that in the UK. Uh, it's. No, I think it'll be Q-Force in the UK, but it, it, it came out on PS3 a while ago, and it was supposed to come to Vita at the same time, cross-buy, cross-play. Oh, really? So, but it just took ages. Okay. I don't really know what happened with it, but... Um, well, if it's going to benefit from it's it... It's been delayed for, like, six months. 
But uh, yeah, uh, and and basically it's uh, coming to North America on May the 21st and May the 22nd in Europe. Um, and yeah, so it came out on the PS3 in November and then it's just been delayed for some really weird reason. But it's coming out with new maps and things and some specific Vita content. So hopefully that will make up for... Uh, for uh, the delay, but I have got it, but I haven't played it yet. But you know, I, I like Ratchet and Clank, um, and this version of it's supposed to have a slightly more sort of tower defense focus. So right. Okay. It's like I think you can have several players in a game, and then like you get waves of enemies coming at you, and you have to set up defenses. Similar, to I would assassin. imagine, to like Gears of War. Uh, uh, you know, like in the oh, horde mode where you okay, set up yeah. your defenses and yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it looks cool. I mean, I'm going to play it at some point soon, okay. for sure, um, on the PS3. So, Okay. Um, and then uh, there was a Nintendo Direct yeah. recently um, that I forced, forced you to watch, to watch at it. gunpoint, yeah. um, which was a bit scary for you. Oh! Oh! I knew you were going to do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this was probably, for me the most exciting thing and they barely spoke about it they told you there was Sonic Lost World coming to yeah. so so Nintendo on their uh, um, on their Nintendo Direct they announced a brand new Sonic game is going to come to the Wii U and 3DS um, exclusive Nintendo title and um, they'll be doing three games with Sega three Sonic games the first of which will be Sonic Lost World. Um, not much was revealed about the game. There was a screenshot, um, yeah. and apparently it will be an action-adventure platforming game. So, <laughs> so similar to any other Sonic. But to be fair, some of the best um, Sonic titles of late, 3D Sonic titles, have been the Nintendo-exclusive ones. Sure, like um, Sonic Colors. Sonic Colors was the best of the bunch, probably. You played that, did you? Yeah, that was, that was the best of the bunch. So and, I've got that, but I haven't played that yet. Well, if you've already, if you played it, if you're playing, you played Generation. I played Generation, which is well, that that was came slightly after, right? Exactly. Uh-huh. So you, you don't go expecting an undiscovered gem, but it it is definitely has like and better than some of the other. Sonic ones. Colors is specifically two D platforming rather than it hasn't got three D sections in it, right? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Right. Um, That's cool. Like, I, it looks interesting. Like, I, I. I I managed to get it for like a tenner or something, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll definitely play that." Uh, after Sonic Generations, which I fucking loved. Yeah, that, that's de- yeah. <clears throat> of every Sonic game recently. That's the one that's kind of restored any kind of hope that Sonic fans, like myself, have. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, you you were a Sega kid, right? So yeah, I grew. I, uh, you know, it's not like I didn't play some of the great NES and uh, SNES titles, but um, sure. uh, in my room. Uh, it was it <laughs> in your was, room. Yeah, I was a Sega kid. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, hopefully they'll uh, announce more details um, in a future Nintendo Direct. They've got like one coming up right before E3, so sure, I'll be good to to hear more about it. Um, I am as well. Uh, other things. Although that, I'm not going to be able to play it since I don't have a Wii U. No, we can come over here and have a little crack at it. Yeah. Um, but, I'm, I'm um, still not even. Oh no, I have. You did show me a Wii U. Yeah. Well, briefly. Briefly. Yeah. Well, yeah, if there were more games to play on it, it wouldn't have been so brief. But mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> So, speaking of Sonic? Yeah, uh, speaking of Sonic, uh, Mario and Sonic uh, at the Soulkey 2014 Olympic Winter Games has been announced. I personally couldn't give a rat's ass. But I know that there are... They're generally well-received games. Yeah, I I bought the first Sonic and Mario at the Olympics um, when the Wii first came out. Mm -hmm. And I actually had quite a lot of fun with it. Um, But that was when the novelty was was still kind of there. And it's sad to say there's no novelty (laughs) with the Wii U, like, really. I mean, like, well, there was a little bit when I first bought it, you know, Mm. playing Nintendo Land, but I think that's... Aside from tapping the screen a little bit, I... I can't. I can't really see any. But uh, anyway, so this new Mario and Sonic uh, game Olympic at the Olympics game uh, has been announced and um, doesn't look any different to the others. No, it looks basically the same. I don't know if they even showed footage. They did. They did. The... Really, I really wasn't paying attention because it was just, I just did not care. Uh, you know, they did. They did show some footage, but it, do, it doesn't look. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah. I mean, it looks better because it's HD, right? But like, but I that's the know, only yeah. improvement. I mean, I, the character models don't look any better or. 
apart from the fact that the higher poly and uh, sure I mean no release date uh, has been announced but uh, with the Winter Olymp- Olympics not taking place until next year um, it pr- will probably be out around that mm-hmm. time to tie in with it but uh, one of the things that I really did enjoy about the first Sonic uh, at the Olympics game was we, we used to play this drinking game mm-hmm. with it and uh and basically, I'm um, not a stranger to the Wii drinking game. Oh no, 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 of course not. Uh, but basically, uh, what we would do is we buy like three kinds of liquor. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's four players. After every game, mm-hmm. you you all have to take a shot. Right. Okay. Okay. But um, if you come in first place, you get to take a shot that is nice, something mm. that you can, you know, you choose something that you would. Well, summon. no, there's a specific one that is nice tasting right so i don't know what it is but then if you come in second or third you have one that tastes pretty disgusting but you can kind of handle it and then if you come in fourth place you have something that just tastes like petrol Grim. so yeah so so, so and honestly you, you you would play harder than you've ever played just to make sure that you don't come in fourth place because it is horrible and like it's it just makes the games the stakes that much higher mm. but everyone's just getting absolutely smashed and obviously uh, with the physical activity involved of waving your arms about and you've got your blood pumping yeah. that much faster. I'm, yeah. It, we drinking games are a lot of fun. And I think that um, as much as I lost a lot of interest in the, in the original Wii for not being a serious contender in the, in the proper gaming, you know, race. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jesus. I, no effort. Sorry. I, no, I can't talk. You can't talk. Well, no, I, can, I can talk, but I, I can't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I think I forgot what I was saying. No, um, the gimmicks wore off, and uh, but they've kind of lost that with the Wii U now. They've tried to come back and compete uh, with the big dogs, and now they're just sitting uh, in an audience that doesn't really appeal to anyone. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we've speculated about this, but I think, I think once their big titles start coming out, People will buy it. It's just it's just going to be a secondary console. I want them to prove me wrong. I do. I do. I know. I I sit here and I don't really have a a good thing to say. I mean, Nintendo Nintendo made a a slew of terrible decisions lately, but we'll we'll get to that. But it's just it's a nightmare. It's just it's their pattern. It's their pattern. If uh, every time they do well, they follow up with a massive mistake. Yeah. If there are any Wii U owners out there, uh, that drinking game can be easily adapted for Nintendo Land. Um, and it's very fun, but you know, don't. I mean, it's very easy to get absolutely wanked. Drink so be responsibility. Careful. Yeah. Well, drink, what did I say? drink responsibility. <laughs> drink or <laughs> responsible. <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, la, la. Drink or responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, the wonderful 101 release date was also announced at that mm. event. Um, available in Europe from August the 23rd and North America from September the 15th. That this is, is a considerable the delay Platinum there. Games one. Yes, it's but it's by Platinum Games. It seems to be some sort of, it, like an overhead sort of real time strategy esque type thing, but with a heavy action focus. Seems. Where you command like a bunch of superheroes, and then you are attacking like huge monsters. And it, it, I mean, it looks cheesy and ridiculous. And, and, yeah, it looks much kind of aimed at a younger audience than Platinum Games are used to. It's quite, you know, quite strange uh, to see them taking on the uh, IP. But I think it looks equally wacky as anything they've ever done before. Sure. And I, I, I'm looking forward to it still. Yeah, I, you know I'm, I'm interested a... to see how it's going to sort of review and how it turns out. Yeah, I mean, they're not flawless. They've had their... they made their mistakes or whatever in the past. Sure. But um, I think that when they're on the money, they have they release some really great games. So I, I'm hoping that we're going to see, a, 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 you know... Uh, yeah, and they're also working on Bayonetta 2. Which, which is, is Wii U exclusive. Which is another Wii exclusive. Yeah, which is annoying for me. Yeah, yeah, well... You know, once you once you make some serious cash, you you know, you can uh, flash it about. I, th- I also uh, it worries me because I, I know I sing their praises a lot, but I think they're a really great studio. I think they're one of the last hopes for Japanese developers at the moment. Um, you know, that recent work on Revengeance sure. was was really great, um, and obviously cooperating with Hideo and um, uh, Kojima, whatever they're called. Kojima Productions. Productions. 
you know, two Japanese giants come together and, and you know, making a great game. And, making and some sweet love and having a sexy game, baby. I, I you know, I'm a fan of Jap- the Japanese games and I think yeah. that they're flagging and they're finding it really hard to keep up. Um, the Western world is really kind of, is setting the trends. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and they've been put in the, the situation now where they're, having to keep up and adapt which is yeah. not what makes them what made them strong in the first place but the thing I, is i think it's kind of like um you have a lot it's like this uh in the music industry or something like you you know you have uh someone will start a genre or a movement and then just because they start it doesn't necessarily mean they're the best then mm. some some other you know bands will take it on and progress it like much further than you would ever thought and it's like the same like you know japanese gaming that was what there was you know yeah. uh, it, 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 you know when i was a kid all of the nintendo stuff was all japanese and they're all the games that i loved and then you know subsequently western developers have come in and and just sort of steadily built you know you know stood on the shoulders of giants and just kind of carried on and carried on and, and now i think that the japanese are having a sort of a hard time sort of keeping up really and, and innovating and I think they're, they're stuck now with the cultural you know before games had this um, language divide it wasn't an issue yeah they didn't need to be localised not really I mean they were text but they didn't have to pay for new voice actors they didn't need to uh, other things like the, the more real you get the more you have to accommodate to cultural differences sure and these things just didn't translate as games got bigger you know the Japanese the way that they approach things with Japanese movies with Japanese you know it appeals very much to their culture other than the people that that love it like me you know <clears throat> sure and, and I, I you know I some of my favorite Japanese games are the ones that really embrace the Japanese and, culture because that's, what, that's think, what it makes yeah. that it makes it unique right but and they're that, trying to mimic the western culture yeah sure. which is you know almost taking what they started and progressing it and now instead of the Japanese carrying on doing what they did well they and, and, and like you say embrace what they do and their wackiness uh, they're trying to copy western and appeal to western and I, I think that they need to make sure that their games do what they have always done appeal to the Japanese audiences you know sell well in their countries and the people that love that uh, in the west they'll pick up on it and they'll buy it and hopefully they'll have the audience that they they need i uh, i know there's always in comparison to sales figures you if you're only selling one in one country it's probably not going to make it over here they're probably not going to release it over here and that can cause issues yeah which is why they want to 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 make it more universally understandable but i think that they're missing so much from their legacy by yeah, I mean, abandoning it think about games like akami right mm. critically acclaimed it didn't sell gangbusters but but it's that, enough that is like to one of the list, most though. Japanese games Definitely. ever, right? I mean, it totally embraces it. Well, it's... And, and everyone, you know, critics love that game. And I love that, that game. Well, I mean, I, I've got it. Uh, I bought it, the HD version, but I haven't played it yet. But you should. Yeah. I definitely will. It's, it's the, I'm going to play it after Tokyo Jungle. Mm-hmm. But it's... Uh, from what I've heard, you know, it, it, it is one of those sort of quintessentially Japanese games that really embraces Japanese culture that, you know, is well respected. I mean, it's respected all, and... all of it is set around Shintoism, which is the only indigenous religion in Japan. Sure. I mean, obviously they laid down the line, uh, uh, adopted Buddhism. and But Shintoism is kind of the most Japanese you can get. You know, it's not even really believed. It's, it's the equivalent of our superstition when you count, you wave to magpies or, you know, but it, <laughs> it, it when you, literally Do you is. wave to magpies? I do. And do they wait back? I wouldn't even mm, squawk. They squawk. Sometimes they fly. Magpies don't squawk. They make that noise, don't they? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it sounds a bit like. (laughs) Mm, Probably more like that than my impression. (laughs) (laughs) I wish you guys could see him. He's like flapping his arms around. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, getting a bit off top. Well, yeah, completely off top. Yeah. But uh, last couple of uh, Nintendo announcement: Pikmin Three, the European release date, has been announced, uh, which is coming to Europe on July the twenty sixth, and that was supposed to come out in the launch window of the the Wii, mm. and it's now like six months later. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, big window. 
Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's more of a uh, French window, if anything. Right. <laughs> no? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, for fans of uh, <clears throat> interior design there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because our huge audience yeah. is going to encompass people uh, study graphic. No. Graphic? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so it's got a release date. Yeah, it surely has. And I, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to this. I, <laughs> I know I know that they're, they're, the games are few and far between, but uh, you know, Pikmin's cool, and, and mm-hmm. I think that's going to be cool. When did the first one come out? Oh, the the, the first one. I think the the first one or two are on the Game GameCube, Cube, right? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. When so there wasn't even a Wii Pikmin. They got ported to the Wii. Yeah, but... I, I'm not sure. I think two might hasn't... have been on the Wii, but... No, no, no. I'm pretty sure one and two were both... Okay, well, they, were, the they were both ported to the Wii afterwards, so you can use so your Wii remote. You know, we've missed an entire generation without a new Pikmin game. Sure, yeah. So this this thing has been a long time in in the works. Yeah, and I, I think it's going to be... It looks, it looks really nice. It, it's got the charm of the originals, and it's got a few new interesting mechanics. Hopefully it'll be good. Yeah, definitely. And uh, finally... Um, Super Luigi U. Uh, <laughs> do I love that? Year of Luigi. Yeah, it is. Or Year the, of Luigi. Whatever. It is the Year of Luigi. That's um, it. And uh, Nintendo has announced a new uh, Super Luigi U. The extensive DLC spin-off from uh, New Super Mario Brothers U will be available digitally from June the twentieth, mm-hmm. which is shortly after my birthday, Ant. So if you fancy getting me a, yeah, a nice present, maybe. Um, you know, other than, than the annual lap dance that you give me, um, I would rather turn up in a Luigi outfit. Yeah, uh-huh. you you could just shave your beard off, so you've just got just that. Got the, I've got a picture on my phone, uh, which I will show you when I charge it. Um, you might have noticed that my beard is not as beardy as it's, it was. It's thinner, yeah, yeah, it's thinner. It was even thinner. It was almost gone. Oh my god! Um, and but I left the moustache. Did you? And took a picture. <laughs> uh, did you look like a sort of a, I looked a YMCA type? I looked like the sort of guy that you would run away from if you saw me in a dark alley. I've always felt that way about you. Well, even more so. Okay, well, that's, that's, that's uh, <laughs> terrifying. That I am terrifying. <laughs> that is really terrifying. I am officially scared. Cool. Uh, but but this DLC basically, it's like a, it's basically a whole other game. It's like the same amount of levels, uh, and the overworld map is the same. But all the levels have been changed. Yeah, and, and it's in reverse, isn't it? I'm, I don't know about that. I, I'm not sure, mate. You might be all right. But um, apparently, for a short time, there will be a box copy available. But um, other than that, you'll have to download it. And depending on how expensive the box copy is, you're like, if it's if it's a similar price, I'm going to buy the box copy because the Wii U has got shit all memory, internal memory. Mm. It's got like 8 or 16 gigabytes or something. Which probably. is... Uh, laughable it is laughable very mm. it's so funny that I want to kill myself right uh, even more so than before yeah well, comedy Ginger. and tragedy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. are two sides of the same coin <laughs> okay so yeah it looks cool if you enjoyed Super Mario Brothers U yeah and like contrary to uh, what we thought it is multi. It is multiplayer rather than just single player. I mean, you can play single player, but uh, and two G players in this multiplayer. Uh, Luigi, two Toads, and a rabbit. So Mario Nabbit, is the is rabbit. Not, not in there. Mario is nowhere to nowhere be f- to be found. No, he's nowhere to be found. And quite right too. It's the year of Luigi. Mm. I'm uh, pretty sick of Mario's shit. Yeah, he. Oh, well, he's such a prima donna. He is. His moustache is shit. Well, he thinks he's so big now, and like you know, he he's, he, still he's always short. talking down to Luigi, even though Luigi's way taller. Exactly, mm. it's you know, it's it's he's it's like, oh, I complex. want my own trailer, I want my own trailer. Mm. You know, I want all this blow and hookers and shit. It's 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 too much. It's too much. It's, sort your shit out. The thing no. is, like Bowser gets a bad rap, but he is just professional on set. He is just a gentleman. He is a gentleman. A- and a I've scholar. Met him. And a scholar. <laughs> So, <coughs> I don't know where that was going. <laughs> Tea break? Tea break. Tea break. Tea 
So, uh, about the, the Wolfenstein, the new order, which we spoke about last time on the podcast, uh-huh. uh, Bethesda has uh, recently announced that it will have no multiplayer, uh, bucking the increasing uh, convention, you know. And I think that's good. Sure. And unlike the last uh, Wolfenstein, which was made by Raven Studios, uh, this one is Bethesda, uh, published by Bethesda, and um, they recently have been putting out a lot of good games. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. I'm feeling a lot more positive about this than I was. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really interest me a whole great yeah. amount of deals. But I will I will have a look when it comes out. No, well, it, I mean, it's Machine Games uh, based in Sweden. and uh, A lot of games coming from Sweden recently. Yeah, well, well it's former uh, Starbreeze Studios folk, so I, I don't see. know, it might be cool. It might be cool. Um, in other news, Bioshock has now shipped 3.7 million copies worldwide. Sure. That's pretty cool. Like, I mean, because it's not, it's not like a big uh, sort of... It's not like a Call of Duty killer franchise, is it? It's more of a niche sort of... Yeah, I guess so. But uh, it definitely deserves it. If, 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 any, um, if any game out there at the moment, AAA game, deserves that amount of sales, it's Bioshock. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so that's that's a lot really positive. Mm. Um, uh, another positive uh, story is that EA are getting rid of online passes. About time. Yeah, I know. Uh, but basically, online for those of you who don't know, online passes are a sort of uh, a controversial attempt by publishers to encourage new game sales by uh, basically uh, when you buy a new game, it comes with a code that you have to enter in order to be able to play their multiplayer so that when someone would sell that game to say uh, you know uh, whatever it, a it game would store uh, diminish in value yeah so they sell it back to a retailer who would then sell it on to someone else second hand but in order for them to play the multiplayer they'd have to buy an online pass basically uh-huh. uh, i'm not sure if that made sense i think it did no it did uh, uh- so uh, apparently EA are just doing away with them, which uh, I mean, th- th- it's surprising me. I guess, I, but then EA are a shrewd company, and I doubt they would do anything out of the kindness of their hearts. So Having think- said that, you know they've been voted as the worst company in America, and maybe maybe they're just trying to do something. What to- I imagine is you're probably along the right lines there. I reckon. <clears throat> In terms of where they're getting money from players, they're probably not getting as much money from this as they thought. Yeah. If anything, it's probably just kind of putting people off. Chump change, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's probably the one place that it can look like they're doing a good good thing without really doing losing a whole lot. Yeah. I, you know? Basically, they're continuing this online pass and <clears throat> no, no new EA titles will include this feature. So that it's not like they're going back and abolishing it from existing. I suppose that's written into the code. It wouldn't be something easily yeah. done. So. And uh, and they're they're sort of moving away from it in the future. And I think this is a good thing. Um, and like I mean, you think EA? I'm not sure if they pioneered this, but it definitely caught on. You know, Ubisoft, Ubisoft was do doing it. it. Yeah. Um, I think Sony have done it for some of their own have they? games. I, I know uh, uh, all the Assassin's Creed, Assassin Creeds, Assassin's Creeds. <laughs> Uh, they've all got, uh, you know, their little pass thing. Yeah, and, and, and I, you know, I understand why they why people do it, and I I buy new games anyway, I so mean, it's it's never really affected me. But I I can see how it would be irritating for gamers. It, it must be frustrating. I can see both sides of the argument, but, but EA, I suppose this is a good a sort of a tick for them when recently they've been having you know a lot of crosses. Red, you right, know. so. Uh, It'd be good for them to to have a bit of good publicity. Yeah, and uh, another bit of EA news is that they have, they currently have no games in development for Wii U. Shame, but I kind of understand. Uh, yeah, no, I totally get I it. I don't really blame them. Um, basically, is that including EA Sports. Yes. Wow. I know. So speaking to Kotaku, EA spokesperson Jeff Brown uh, confirmed um, that we have no games in development for the Wii U currently. Um, this follows up on recent news uh, that Madden will not be released on the Wii U, um, and it looks like obviously FIFA isn't going to be on it this year, um, that's which is almost an impossibility, right? So I mean, that's on everything. Bizarre. Yeah. So I think. I guess they're reading their audience. 
Yeah, well, I mean, initially EA did come out and say that they were going to support the the uh, the Wii U, and I guess they've sort of done that. But to be fair, they released like Mass Effect on it, mm. Mass Effect Three, mm. and a few old games, and you know that's not really going to cut it. Most Wii U owners, I'm sure, are, are hardcore gamers, so they're already going to have played those games, right? Yeah, I mean, so far, really, all Wii U owners have got from any developer is, you know, the ultimate version of games they probably exactly. already played. Um, and Wii U have got the funds to potentially get one of their their studios working on an exclusive, or at yeah. least... Uh, I, I think... I think it, what surprised me the most is that they're not even considering it um, cross-platform EA games, uh, EA sports games like... FIFA, yeah. which is like must be. Think about this: FIFA. St- they still make FIFA for the PS2. That's what I mean. It's That's fucking what I mean. crazy. It must be one of their like <sighs> money makers. You know, anywhere they can squeeze a bit more money out of that game, you would have thought they would. I know it's mad, isn't it? Like, but then you've got to think about how much it's going to cost to port that to the Wii U mm. versus how much they're actually going to make by selling sure. it. And I've got to say. Um, if I was a Wii U owner, I couldn't give a rat's ass whether it was on there or not. No, so. I, if I was going to buy FIFA, which obviously I, I'm not, not but if not I was going to, then I would definitely buy it on one of the other one two of the consoles. Other, Everyone yeah. knows that the Wii U is a secondary console. Yeah. It's like you have that in addition to your PlayStation or Xbox or both. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think EA have recognised that. And, and it's That's sad that enough, there isn't yeah. third-party... More third party coming to the Wii, yeah, but um, it's not. It's not even. But it is. A, it is a sign that um, that the Wii U is not going to be a serious contender in the next generation. But then the Wii didn't have third party a lot of third party software either. It, I mean, it had a lot of shovelware, and it did have <laughs> yeah. some third party stuff. But yeah. you know, it, it, EA and Ubisoft didn't support it like that hard or whatever. And it was. It no, was, that's fair enough. I don't know. I I think that. If if Wii U can't get this third party software, it's going. They're going to have to rebrand. Make, I think they're is... going to have to just make more, uh, open more studios and put out a lot more first party software. And I'm not talking about just churning out all their Mario's and Zelda's and all this stuff. And I, I want those. I do, but I want but, to see some uh, some new IPs, right? I mean, what what is it that Nintendo are known for? They're known for being innovative. You know, they're known for kind of getting these really great first party games but we haven't seen any new first party games in a long time the thing is and in, I would rather I know a lot of people would disagree with me but I would rather never see another Mario game again and see a new Nintendo IP step in to take its place something that can be yeah. equally as iconic I think perhaps I disagree with you about that point because I love Mario but the thing is I I feel like people um Mistake Nintendo not uh, using these characters over and over again as them just just rehashing the same old crap. But within each of these Mario games, pretty much yeah. they they like take it somewhere really interesting and different. They do. I know they do, yeah. And like the and you know a lot of their other franchises as well. Um, but I, I agree that that they they should totally carry on doing that. But they need some new IPs as well. I, I, I'm not saying that I want to abolish Mario. Uh, Abolish Mario. Yeah. I'm not make him illegal. Yeah, I'm not. I was, you know, it was just hyperbole. I, sure, I, I yeah. wanted to emphasize the fact that there's a lot of creative talent in their first party studios, and we're not seeing enough of it. And seeing Mario's face over and over again is getting tiring. Yeah, you know, even for for Nintendo to be fans, fair though, we in recent. Uh, in the last year or so, we've been totally saturated in mm. Mario. There's been so much, like and between the 3DS and, and the mm-hmm. Wii U, it and the Wii. Even it's just been too much. I mean, I I, I want to see the new 3D Mario game. Yeah, oh, I can sure. you know, and I the new Mario Kart. And the new Mario Kart. I've had endless nights of fun on various Mario Kart. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. I, I am looking forward to those, but I think I would be looking forward to those a lot more if I hadn't been. You know, had Mario shoved down your throat. Shoved down my throat, and not even first class Mario, just, you know, a, a Super Mario Bros. U was basically the same as the recent 3DS one. Sure. But just slightly nicer graphics. And then you've got, like, 
him in so many other games, like with the golf and the tennis and Nintendo oh, Land and all oh. that shit, just like all all over the place. And so. it's getting boring. I want I want to see them throw caution to the wind. And is that the saying? Yeah. <laughs> I suddenly, I suddenly thought, is that? Is that? Am I just? I don't, am I just making something up? Yeah. You could set. You could start this. You could set a trend. I, I want them. I want. I want to see some new IPs, some new great IPs like we used to. Yeah. Well, uh, one uh, developer who certainly won't be uh, making a new IP for the Wii U is Avalanche Games, right. famous for their Just Cause series. Apparently, um, they have no plans to develop Wii U games, and uh, they were speaking to a Norwegian website, Pressfire, um, recently, and they were basically just saying that their Wii, Wii U dev kits are just collecting dust in their studio. Ouch. And, uh, yeah, that, that's... I mean, uh, 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 just before, uh, one of the EA, I think it was EA um, executives, when uh, it came out that they weren't going to make any games for the Wii U, l- literally said on Twitter... The Wii U is a piece of crap. Wow! Like in those words, uh, so it's it's really bad. Like I mean, the situation is looking increasingly grave uh, for the Wii U. Sad. Yes. I mean, uh, worst case scenario, we see Nintendo pull out of hardware development, and how that would be awful. I don't want to see that. No. You know, I, no. I, I'm massively, massively underwhelmed with the Wii U uh, as a piece of hardware. I think everyone is really. Yeah. But they have done so much for gaming, and they can continue to do a lot for gaming, but they need to sort their shit out, and they need to do it soon. Sure. Um, And uh, basically, uh, do you remember a while ago, uh, we saw that screenshot of what looked like it could possibly be a new Just Cause game? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Recently, that uh, has been, uh, rumour has been sort of debunked. And apparently it's it's not a new Just Cause game, but it, it was like an old game that they were thinking about developing and they, and they but eventually they ran out of funds or money or time or something and it didn't and get to put in development. Okay. But it's not what they're working on now. So I expect this, that they are working on Just Cause 3 and I can't fucking wait for yeah, them to announce I know it. we always go on about it, but I yeah. am looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, from uh, EA and uh, Avalanche to Ubisoft... Um, recently Ubisoft have discussed their next gen plans um, and they've reported uh, that uh, for fiscal 2013 which is April 2012 to March 31st uh, 2013 they, uh, their revenue has been up 18% uh, to 1.256 billion which is uh, 1.614 billion dollars uh, did I say euros before? I don't know. I don't know. I I've, think you just said. I just said some numbers. Numbers. I just said some numbers. They, they it, basically they're doing. They got, they're they got doing lots it. of money. Yeah, they're, they're making some. They're making some money. They're rolling in it. And uh, since Ubisoft are a French company, I would love for you to read this in a French accent. Oh, you are your French accent is is it's wonderful. All right, let's give this a go. The expertise and talent of our teams enabled Ubisoft to remanage the year's difficult market conditions, conditions, and the, <laughs> conditions. And the drop in the casual segment remarkably well, said Ubisoft. Oh no, uh, this is not it anymore. This is not a quote. Mm-hmm. That was wrong. <laughs> Sorry, I'm terrible. So, said uh, Ubisoft CEO Yves 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 Guillemot. <laughs> ah, quite. Sacre bleu. <laughs> Indeed. Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they're doing all right. Um, let's just quickly just, just skip on from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, in addition to the success of Far Cry 3, which was a bit of a I surprise forgot, yeah. hit for them, mm. um, Assassin's Creed just and Just Dance... You know, I mean, Assassin's Creed and Just Dance were their were their main two IPs, and that alone must have generated exactly, yeah, a lot of money. And then they've had, now had Far Cry Three, and I think they think that Watch Dogs is going to be a sort of a, a, a contender as well. Yeah, I, I'm certainly excited for them. Yeah, absolutely. So I think they're sort of coming up in the world, really. And, and I, I, and not to mention all the sort of Tom Clancy shit that they've got yeah. going on. And like, I, I really like all the Tom Clancy games. They've always sat in the background. Not, not in the background. They're not like... But they're, they're, they're sort of... Are they AAA? I would say they're AAA. They're AAA, yeah. AAA yeah. but they're not... They're sort of on a lower... I guess so, but not for much longer by the looks of things. 
Uh, what I'm worried about is them becoming the new EA and EA rebranding themselves. And a lot of these things are gamers' opinions. And, and in the gaming community, they can have such a detrimental effect. Like before long, if everyone's saying, oh, Ubisoft are, you know, AAA scum, and that will happen. Do you, you think? Know. Uh, I hope not. I like Ubisoft. I like Ubisoft. But you've got. I have to kind of look at some of their actions recently and start to see a pattern occurring. Uh, for instance, uh, we've spoken about it before, Assassin's Creed. Uh, the two and its subsequent, you know, sequels, uh, it, the Ezio. Yeah, the annualising, yeah. They were great. I loved them. I loved two and, and, and its two sequels, but fucking hell, I'm bored of that now. I've, I still haven't played sure. three, and it's just because... It's do, they're doing a Call of Duty with it, you know. They're throwing it around their studios. It's getting diluted. The eye, the, the, something that was, you know, quite profound uh, before. You know, quite an intelligent story and, and a unique um, twist on historical events. Something that I really enjoyed has somehow, through just oversaturation, become boring and and, yeah. and I just don't care anymore. Well, this leads us on uh, nicely to. Um... The sort of story about Ubisoft firing uh, Patrice Desolais, you know, the, yeah, the, the this is what I mean, like, I mean, know. And, and apparently he isn't the only one that was let go. Um, Ex-Assassin's Creed production manager Jean-Francois Boivon mm-hmm. has uh, reportedly been fired from Ubisoft as well. For, uh, have they stated why? Uh, well, the news comes from the Twitter account uh, of Patrice Desolais, who was, uh, let, for those of you who don't know, he was let go from Ubisoft recently and... Uh, I mean, this this all seems very suspect, right? So he left Ubisoft, you know, a, a while back. Uh, he created Assassin's Creed, right? Left Ubisoft, mm-hmm. went to go work for THQ Montreal uh, instead of Ubisoft Montreal, where he was previously. Mm-hmm. And he started developing his game 1666. We're not really sure exactly what the game no, was. No, it's a historical, we would imagine, something, you know. It, it's, it's a significant date. I mean, it's, it's uh, the Fire of London. Is all set around, around then. So, you know, potentially it could be something about that. But uh, he, so he, uh, and then THQ obviously went under, and all their sort of they were selling their assets, selling their studios and their IPs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And Ubisoft bought up uh, THQ Montreal yeah. and sort of assimilated it back into uh, into their warm, melt, lovely nucleus. Yeah, uh, like, like the Borg. Indeed, and uh, and then they basically bought it, bought the, his the, studio, his team, bought his studio, bought his team, fired him, and suspended sixteen sixty six, which is which is underhand, underhanded, and oh, absolutely, and is that is some shady shit. That is yeah, and it's without a doubt. It doesn't matter what way you look at it. That that is clear revenge. You know, we're teaching you a lesson, you motherfucker. Either that, or it's it could have been um, an Assassin's Creed competitor, and they're sort of they 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 basically buy them to put them out of business, so that they can't you know yeah. be a direct competitor. And I understand financially why you would approach it in that way, but this is exactly the sort of behaviour that I was talking about. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is the this is the sort of stuff that Ubisoft need to to avoid before they do become the next EA. Exactly. You know? It's it's like a. EA are the dark side. You be softer, like the sort of the the good side of the force, and they're being corrupted, and eventually and they're they gonna are. and you know they're gonna Palpatine and fucking. And I I, I like the fact that a talented you know with <laughs> Eve Skillmore yeah. is gonna have like lightning <laughs> shooting out of his fingers and like will be wearing a dark black cloak. Well, I, your I... friends on the moon will not survive. <laughs> oh, I'm very well. <laughs> I don't know what this is. What the hell is that supposed to be? I don't mind what power. <laughs> that sounded more like my grandma. Stack me down. Oh, uh, wait. No. I that's, know, that's, that's one of the that, others. That, that's one of the other ones. I, that, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, there's a no, lot no, no, wait, of No, no, wait, 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 wait. Stack me down with all of your anger and your transition towards the dark side will be... Complete. That's the one. Something like that. It's, yeah. it, it, to be fair, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, 
there's going to be a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is know. cheeky. This is cheeky shit, like Ubisoft, right? 1666, they've... they've and what, what's, what's more is they haven't cancelled 1666. No, they've just benched they've, it. They've benched it, right. So they technically own it. So poor old Patrice... Um, who's already got a terrible situation because he's been named Patrice. Mm. Uh, he has... Which is an awful name. It's quite bad. <laughs> quite bad. Um, uh, he, so he, his, his baby, this game that he's been developing and conceiving for, for a while, you know, Ubisoft have basically sort of snuck in, nicked it, and then because it's not technically cancelled... It stays with them, mm. so he can't do anything. Yeah, and it's fucking bullshit. It's um, it's pretty. It's pretty evil. That's yeah, some, that's some I, pretty nasty shit. I mean, the guy might be a dickhead. He might be an absolute. Yeah, Patrice. He might be a proper knob. Yeah. Um, but that shouldn't come into it. You know, it, it, at the end of the day, he's done them yeah. a lot of good. Well, you never know. He might have banged. Uh, Yee's Gelimong's wife or something and like done mm. some crazy shit uh, yeah. you know who knows he could have done anything but looking at looking at it objectively <clears throat> it seems like a pretty no it's it's not cricket pretty it's... shitty thing from Ubisoft absolutely um, Montreal but uh, you know I mean that, and that sucks but on a more positive note Ubisoft has two new AAA games coming uh, very soon uh, it's got. They are yet to be announced. Um, one is a new entry in AAA franchise, and another is completely uh, is a completely new brand. Awesome. Um, so uh, this this news came a uh, from their earnings call uh, for their 2013 fiscal year, and uh, they'll both be unveiled very soon. Um, EA, Ubisoft. This is. Uh, E3? I got, oh. <laughs> I got that mixed up earlier. I'm now getting it the other way around. Yeah, uh, yeah. You need we... to drink more of your beer. Get yeah. get more pumped. Do... Do the body. Sorry, I'm uh... not sure what you're doing now. <laughs> I like it. That was like the it. second edition. Oh, oh, I haven't got a gaming question. Oh, it's okay. I don't think there's time for a gaming no. question this week. Um, what I was saying is, does, does it look like we will see these... Um, new reveals at E3 potentially um, they will be unveiled during the course of the year so uh, probably not all at once fair enough oh uh, yeah I mean, there's only, I mean there's only two of them but, but like I mean one of them is already in a AAA franchise do you think that could be Rainbow Six I mean we haven't seen anything from them for fucking ages mm, very possible Rainbow Six Patriots uh, was delayed until next gen but it was supposed to come out like a year, a year and a yeah, half ago. I haven't heard least. anything about it in a long time. I, I really want a new Rainbow Six. Yeah? Yeah, I really... I enjoyed Vegas 2 and Vegas cool. 1 a lot. So. Actually, they are good games, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, I mean... And, I, I mean, it's, I, I love new IPs, so, you know, it could be really cool. Uh, last couple of stories uh, before the Xbox news. Um, so, I don't know if you saw this, but recently, Joe Biden... Um, uh, recently, uh, he was having this meeting with uh, some sort of not fundamentalist Christians, but some quite Christiany types. Um, no, I don't think so. But, I don't uh, either. Yeah, they're fucking assholes. But um, basically, uh, someone asked him, "Oh, what about taxing um, sort of violent films and violent games, all this kind of stuff?" And he said, "Oh, I see no legal reason why taxing violent media." Including video games would be an issue. Um, so he's saying that violent things should be taxed, and he sees uh, no reason as to why. He didn't say they should be, uh, but someone asked him, and he said, "I see no legal reason why they shouldn't be." And I'm not sure if that is like pacifying him, being like, "Well, there's no reason why it couldn't happen," I just think... to sort of shut him up, or whether it's a genuine, "We could do this," because they would make a fuck sh- load of money if they did do that. Outrageous, but you know, again, I, I, I'm not sure if that's what they intend to do or no. But imagine that you, you're kind of like taxing art. It's like it's sort of like freedom of speech, isn't it? Like uh, it'll be contested massively. There's no way, right? The thing you, we're not just talking about video games here. We're talking about TV, all medias. Yeah, all yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's gonna cause. An insane uproar, something that they're not really. 
you know, it'd be like them turning around and say, uh, we're going to, you know, massively increase the tax on alcohol. It'd be worse than that because alcohol actually causes... Yeah, alcohol is, is detrimental. Yeah. I say that as I am drinking. drinking yeah. But, but it's proven to have a serious <laughs> detrimental effect on society. Absolutely. Whereas video games, violent media, whatever, I, I think that... The link has never been proven. It's never been proven, and anyone that tries to prove it, I just... I, I have many there's, words there's, to say to you, but they're mainly There's uh, There's more offensive. important things to worry about. At the end of the day, if, someone, if someone's offended, if someone's violent, they're... <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. If someone's violent, they're going to be violent anyway. Uh, I feel violent. <laughs> now. Right now, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, sorry. I did just come out. Oh, it didn't all come out. <laughs> yeah. I think we all know where we stand on this issue. Yeah. Uh, it's bullshit. But I don't think Fuck it's going to happen. Vice President Biden. Indeed. <laughs> Biden is time. Um, <laughs> uh, and finally, um, Nintendo. Who? Nintendo, no, they no. are some kind of company that's got some kind of console that no one's buying. I don't know. Cool. It's bullshit. But um, apparently, um, they. Uh, wow. You know, like. Pe- you know people, <laughs> you know people do like uh, let's plays and stuff yeah. on YouTube. Apparently, any uh, one that does a let's play that involves Nintendo's stuff, they are now, you know, like uh, how certain people on YouTube that make money, they make money through ad revenue, right? Quite a lot of money, actually. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so someone will do a let's play of a Nintendo game, and then they will get the money from ads. Nintendo is saying, no, you're using our content, so we will get that money from those adverts. How can they enforce that? Apparently they have. Uh, they have started claiming the ad revenue on user-created YouTube videos featuring its games. Um, Do you think this, they, it just seems really desperate? Potentially, but Nintendo are fucking rich. I don't know why, they, why they're doing this. It's just, it's, they're just going to look like absolute cocks mm. and... And like, I mean, they have made a lot of questionable decisions lately. Like, I'm a Nintendo fan. As am I. And they, they have just been doing one fucking stupid thing. They the really, next. really have. You know, you look at places like Twitter and, um, you know, Kotaku I, I know, and I know, haters love to hate, or haters hate to congratulate and yeah. all that malarkey. But you know, and everyone, everyone's a critic. That's yeah, true. At the end of the day. And it's a changing world uh, for the games industry quite rapidly, recently. For sure. But games are for the gamers. They're about the gamers, and it, and it, and it's a, it's despite its ever growing <clears throat> numbers, it's a close community. You sure. know, there are very focused places like NeoGaf, you know, places where people are, you know, uh, IGN. There, there are the communities, and, and they. Let, these Let's Plays are just one of the things the, that we, we enjoy the, doing. You yeah. Know? The thing is, there's no real upside to it. Nintendo don't need the money. And the the Let's Plays in themselves are like publicity for their games, it's right? Like, okay, fine. You know, they might not be the most positive or, or reviews or, or whatever, but it, like they say, all publicity is... Good publicity. Good publicity. Sure. I just feel like it's a real dick move on Nintendo's part. Real dick move. Yeah. Really disappointing to hear. These are people who are playing and enjoying their games and showing other people what they're doing, you know. Exactly. And advertising their games. Yeah. But some of these people uh, have millions of views on their videos. Yeah. Some of the, you know, the the the, the bigger people in the, in the <clears throat> game community, they and they're effectively advertising. Nintendo stuff. What's what's really sad as well is that Nintendo are like actually really rich because they only make games, uh, as opposed to Sony who make like multiple devices. They're mm-hmm. they're very, they've got a very niche focus and they they've made a lot of money and they don't need this money. And then you get people who put a lot of effort in on YouTube and are finally starting to get some money, and then Nintendo swoop in and just dick all over them. I think it's uh, it is a dick move because yeah. at the end of the you know these people. Uh, whether they're aspiring journalists or, or just avid gamers, they it's created new opportunities for them. 
Yeah. I mean, you know, the games have, have created these new opportunities. It's, it's given another dimension to, to the gaming community. And Nintendo are coming in there and saying, no, we want a piece of that pie, mate. In fact, we want all of your fucking pie. Carry on doing the work for us, though. Yeah, it's, it's not cool. And I think, <clears throat> if anything, that's just going to make people want to play their games less. And people are not playing their games at the moment because there are fucking none, so it's just bullshit. It is a dumb move. Oh, Nintendo, why do you do the things that you do? It just doesn't make SNES. <laughs> it doesn't make SNES. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. So recently, uh, well, recently, a few hours Today. ago, uh, we watched the uh, new Xbox presentation, mm-hmm. and uh, lots of information has come to light. The first uh, uh, of which tidbit, tid tidbit, tidbit, tid tidbit. Is it tidbit? Tid tid. I think it's tidbit in America, but it's tidbit in England. That's a ridiculous cultural divergence. Yeah. Tit bit. It is the name, of course. Um, the Xbox e- tidbit. <laughs> the, the Xbox tidbit in England Tid. and the Xbox tidbit in America. No, it's 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 the uh, it's it's been war well, the Xbox seven twenty, as it's been sort of colloquially known, um, is now known as the Xbox One mm-hmm. because it's the third Xbox. In- yeah, and obviously three minus one minus one. This is, I think, the thinking behind it is uh, the all-in-one, you know, you don't need to change channel, <clears throat> we are your new everything. The centre of your living the room. The centre of your living room, you know, the one box We've you We've got need. the music, the TV, the films, the games. Yeah. We've also... It, the apps. Another reason I think they've gone for it is, one, uh, as it's written, O-N-E, is three characters. Same as 360. So they haven't really had to do a great deal of ad- adapting with the um, with the logo. Sure. Still sits nicely underneath um, and is still familiar. So there are bonuses. Uh, not necessarily bonuses, but I <coughs> can kind of see some kind of logical thinking. Sure. Where I think it's illogical is the fact that it is not the first Xbox. Exactly. Um, but it is, it is O-N-E instead, as opposed to like the number one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. Like I, I can say, see it, like the, the one console to rule them all, yeah. one uh, uh, red ring to bind them. It, it just might be a little bit confusing when people want to talk about the first Xbox. Sure, no, um, I, feel, I feel you. I feel you. Um, but I guess... Yeah, no, uh, and, and what's sort of really strange is that <clears throat> this name had not been heard whatsoever before no. tonight. We had like Xbox Infinity, Fusion, Fusion, what was that Next other one? Box, Seven Twenty, yeah. all Durango, that. Sh- Durango, Durango, exactly. Yeah. So it, we had a bunch of like you know. Uh, Cryptos was that one? Crypt, Cryptos, Crypt- 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 something, something weird. Crypto. Well, that sounds weird. It sounds like some... you're tossing in a crypt. <laughs> Which is. Which is coincidentally my favorite. <laughs> <part. laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, exactly. I mean, like. It's it's unexpected the naming and mm. I I don't love it. Um, I can kind of see where they're coming from, but I preferred Xbox Infinity. I think I also did. But I mean, even Xbox Seven Twenty, I would have probably preferred. Uh, uh, the thing is, you've got to think in terms of like <coughs> marketing or whatever. The, well, it, with the original Xbox, you know, people called it the Xbox, funnily enough. Uh, and then the 360, or the Xbox 360, we I always refer to it as the 360. Sure, absolutely. You know? um, I'm not but we're about not to pop re- into a room and go, mate, you send the new one game. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> one is playing the one, of course. Yeah. So what are you going to say? Uh, X- Xbox One, X One? It just... It doesn't feel like you can really... I, just call, I don't think people are just going to call it the Xbox. I know, I know yeah, that's what I mean. But, I, but I, I don't know. The, the, the name... It doesn't. It doesn't really tickle my deal. pickle. Yeah. But I think with a console being named the Wii, anything is better. So uh, indubitably, quite quite. Um, but uh, <clears throat> basically, yeah. 
So the system includes eight gigabytes of RAM, um, an eight core CPU, uh, a 500 gigabyte hard drive, which is awesome. You know, I mean, that's that's decent. Could have been a terabyte. Could have. Uh, maybe there will be one with a terabyte. Possibly. I mean, they did tiered models in the last one, so. Uh, in fully... comparison to the Wii U, though, it's <clears throat> still kicking balls. Yeah, kicking balls. Um, and uh, a Blu-ray drive, mm-hmm. um, HDMI in and out, uh, USB 3.0. <clears throat> wow. All, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's yeah. got all the bells and whistles. It's it's, it's pretty pimp. Um, as 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 they say. As they say, pretty pimp. Um, the look, <coughs> the look has grown on me. When they first unveiled it, I kind of thought looks a bit like the old VCR. It looked a bit sure. blotty. It's very angular, isn't really. it? Really. Um, very sh- sharp edges, very box-like. Um, whereas the Xbox 360, I mean, uh, initially the slim. the slim, yeah. I mean, it, it was a bit more angular uh, at first, but it's sort of the the newer Xboxes look very nice. They're really very nice sleek, looking yeah. console. Um, this, this is more like just a big rectangle, isn't it? It is a big rectangle, and, and by the looks of it, half of it is <sighs> uh, half of the top uh, is completely exposed. Um, I'm guessing for ventilation purposes. Ventilation, sure. Um, <clears throat> in an attempt to not stumble um, with overheating problems that like they did previously. Yeah, I mean, the Xbox uh, was notorious for its overheating mm-hmm. problems, and uh, this new console is supposed to also run basically silently. Basically, yeah. So. Uh, which which uh, is really interesting. And it's um, <clears throat> it's uh, it's got the Kinect uh, package the new Kinect, the Kinect 2.0 or whatever, whatever it is, yeah. packaged in with it, mm-hmm. and a new controller, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but first of all, um, they 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 sort of began uh, this press conference by just it was weird, like the Sony press conference started off with this awesome sort yeah, of build up with this crazy video. Yeah, it was like being slapped in the face with it, wasn't it? Yeah, like, in like a really cool way, and and then this kind of one was more like. Hello, we like to talk to you about the Xbox. But I mean, that's exactly that's Microsoft, right? I guess, but fuck me. Yeah, anyway, so they they unveiled the, the fucking console, and then they started talking about the interface, and some of it was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Like <clears throat> they uh, basically would they they were using Connect uh, voice commands and hand commands to move through. All the seamlessly, kind of, yeah, like seems, very seamlessly, yeah. um, to move through all this kind of stuff that they were showing you, and they were showing you how you can kind of split the screen and have part of it be a film, part of it be a browser, all this kind of stuff, and, and it ha- has the processing power <clears throat> to to run these applications simultaneously. Yeah, absolutely, and and you can uh, you can sort of. Um, Without having to manually pick up a remote and change the inputs, you can say, oh, I want to watch TV, I want to play this game, I want to do this and that, and it can kind of do it for you, like, very quickly. It look, and yeah. then by sort of, you know, like, say you were uh, going on an iPad and how you can pinch to zoom and you can kind of scroll up and down with your hand, you can see, seemingly do similar things with the Xbox. Yeah. Opening and closing windows by moving your hands and mm. further apart and together really interesting stuff and like the thing is i would not give a shit about any of that if connect wasn't packaged in because i'm not about to go out of my way to buy Buy that shit no but seeing as it's there and it's part of the console Mm. that is fine that is fine i it would bother me a lot if we are actually just being tricked into buying it by giving us an outrageous uh retail price sure um without the option (laughs) <clears throat> because that, that's one thing that they didn't announce was the price, and I didn't really expect them to. But um, it, I mean, I'm I'm sure that this, along with the PS4, will be about five hundred quid a pop. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. And it also had Skype, a bunch of like TV int- integration, um, all sorts of stuff, uh, and it looks fairly similar, doesn't it? The dashboard of the it definitely the new familiar. It, 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 where we are now um, with the current 360 dashboard, it doesn't look a million miles from that. No. Um, which is a good thing. I think they've kind of pretty much got it down now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I just hope that it's a bit easier to navigate to find specific things. Yeah. Sometimes you can't find <clears throat> what, you know, 
that one thing you're looking for, they've made it so. Yeah, hard, I think I think that you know people like us that play it a lot will will be all right, but you know the average person I could imagine. Getting... Which is a bit strange, uh, seeing as though from uh, the looks of this press conference, they really are um, looking to appeal to to average Joe in the sense that okay, it's still it's an all rounder. It's right? an all rounder. Okay, it's still competing in the in the hardcore gamers market, but. You compare this to um, Sony's. Um, they made a big deal about the games, um, and they they made a big deal <coughs> about the support they're given indies, um, and how that this is going to be a console for gamers. There was no talk about that. There was no. there was there was barely even any games. This, that we'll get onto. This was more like what I imagined Sony's press conference would be like. Very to the point. Hardware, hardware, hardware. Mm. You know, but, and, it, but, and it was, and, and, it, and not just that, but even even the people they the the game developers that they did have there, the studios that they did have in to to help, you know, unveil their new machine. Um, the first it was half what was it half an hour in thirty something minutes in before we saw any games, <coughs> and it was EA Sports. Um, yeah. So so EA, and then closing it with Activision. And the new Call of Duty. Uh, other than those two, really, that was all we saw. Yeah, pretty um, much. They are the big dogs. They are the the money makers. They're the AAA, and I, it, it to me. I think they were appeasing their investors or whatever. But but you know they they showed us some cool stuff still. Like the controller looks awesome. Um, yeah, I couldn't have hoped for a better controller, really. <clears throat> no, and and uh, I don't know if you can see this picture here, Ant, but it looks really cool. Like. Uh, it, it's basically really similar to the current Xbox controller, mm. except um, that they've improved the D-pad, they've changed the analog sticks very slightly in terms of... Um, it looks like they've brought the left one in a little bit. Potentially. they've Instead of the main home button, they've got two small... Or, or the start and select button, rather, they've got two sort of different... Uh, mysterious. Mysterious buttons, indeed. And they've got the home button at the top, which looks to be more of a touch... Button. Mm, it looks a bit strange um, in that picture. It, it, it looks very similar, but just refined slightly. Um, and I am really like pleased. I'm relieved. Yeah. I, I, um, I, uh, I I thought I also really liked the new PlayStation controller. Hmm. So I think these uh, sort of uh, sort of slightly enhanced versions of both of them, I've been really happy with. Um, and you know, we we're never going to know. The controller is something that you really need hands on. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But um, but from what what I've seen, I'm really happy with both. I'm definitely relieved to see they haven't stuck a load of ridiculous things onto my controller. Sure. Yeah. The boom with like boomeranging it up, like. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, not cool, but but uh, you know, as far as next gen uh, Kinect goes, um, the device is uh, set to feature a 1080p camera, and uh, can d- detect the slightest rotation of a wrist or shoulder. Um, I mean, we saw a little bit of a tech demo of it, right? <clears throat> and... I'm, I'm not sure how much of that was emulated for the purpose of presentation. Um... Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I I don't think any of us are going to sort of extol the virtues of, of Connect. I mean, it's pretty uh, widely... Um... Despised? Despised. <laughs> yeah. Despised. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, but, you know, see, again, seeing as it's packaged in... Um, I'm kind of excited because I've never really I've well I've never used a Connect. No, I've I mean, never I... even used one once, and I I'm not going to go out of my way to. But seeing as it's packaged in again, it's something that I'd like to just have a look at. For me, Connect. What they have now with Connect 2.0 seems like what Connect should have been the entire time. Sure. Um, the original Connect at the time we had a huge. Uh, it became a bit of a scare. I think <coughs> their motion control. Um, really started to bring in the money. It really started to put a dent in hardcore gamers. And, and Microsoft and Sony just wanted a bit of that pie. Uh, and Microsoft tried to go Everyone one step further. Everyone just wants pie they all the time. Pie. I wouldn't <laughs> mind the pie, though, actually. I'm pretty hungry. Um, yeah. Well, but, like, it's, it's, it's just the whole pie thing. The whole pie thing, I mean, there are, you know, you can get savoury pies and sweet pies. That's that's the thing about pies. There's, they cater for everyone. Mm. Uh, so, uh, connect and stuff. Uh, it looks cool. I, I'm excited anyway because I've never really used it. And um, I think yeah. you, you guys, you, 
you know, listening, you, you should, if you haven't already, you should definitely check it out. There's lots of cool HD images online, like, um, mm. and the whole thing, even though it looks very blocky, which I'm really not a blocky, huge fan yeah. of, um, it's all, you know, the, the design is, to be fair, the console is going to go under your fucking desk. You're never going to look at it. Mm. You know, I mean, uh... they've tried, they've tried to take this minimalistic, stylish approach, you know, yeah. fit in with the tile system and, I think it's supposed it to, to look a, a lot like your sort of DVD box or your your your. I think your, it, yes. Your, what, what do you call it? Like a tele tele box? What's it called? Like a, a Blu-ray player? Not a Blu-ray player. Like like your your free view box. Not like a cabinet. Y- I know what a fucking cabinet is. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a sky box. Like a sky or, box. Okay. Like a like a like sort a TiVo of a, or whatever. a TiVo. Right, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that would do. Sorry, I don't really watch TV like that much. It sounds really douchey, but but they obviously want they want it to look at home in anyone's living room. Sure, yeah. Um, and they and don't want someone to walk in and go, say for example, um, a middle aged uh, couple, um, and <laughs> they invite their middle aged couple friends round. What are their friends they, called? Uh, Marie Antoinette. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and Percival Watts, right? <laughs> okay. They're going to pop round to see um, Jemima and Geraldine. And, <laughs> and they're going to see... Uh, what are they seeing them for? Swingers Party. Swingers Party? Yeah. So it's three girls and one bloke. Yeah. That sounds quality. Married couple. Okay, fair enough. Well, that sounds good. And, and, and like... <laughs> How many inches has this guy got? That's what. That's the question. A lot. All right. Oh, He's right. fucking accommodating I, for a lot of them. All right. I'm just saying. I'm, uh, okay. He can like a kebab. Yeah. Yeah. Is it on a stick? No, his dick is like a massive log. Okay. What was your point you were trying to make? I was just trying to say it's gonna <laughs> it's, it's gonna look classy and and fit in and it's gonna sit in your nice posh cabinet. It's, or it's gonna fit in. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gone <laughs> in your posh <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> Is that what you're calling it these days, kids? Whatever point I was trying to make, <laughs> it's long gone. It's long gone. It's long gone. Silver. It looks fine. It looks cool. Um, so, um, <laughs> uh, they did mention that uh, the Xbox One, um, Such a named bit. after the Metallica <laughs> song of the same name, yeah. um, yeah. uh, that's, that's my rendition of it. <laughs> that's <laughs> one bit of the song. Yeah, that's the best bit. It is, actually. Uh, How's the rest of the song going? I have no idea. I've got no arms and legs. <laughs> That sounds kind of like it. I, I don't... I mean, I I've only remember. seen the video. Okay. I can't really remember what song goes <laughs> like. I can only remember that bit that goes... <laughs> is there a bit where it goes... <laughs> I think that is the song. Ah, uh, okay, that's the song, yeah. Because <laughs> that sounds like it. That sounds like Metallica. Um, so, basically... Um, uh, <laughs> uh, they basically revealed that the um, console... The X, new Xbox, the one. The Xbox One. The yep. Xbox Who hey, <laughs> is uh, going to get fifteen exclusives in its first year, which is, which is bally splendid. And of those fifteen, eight of them are going to be new <laughs> IPs. Indeed, and uh, twelve of them are going to be Connect games. Now, that's not true, but I bet there there's going to be a bug. No, a bug. Fourteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By Connect games, we mean Connectimals, uh, Star Wars Connect Two. Star Wars Connectimals to Yeah. I'd play that. I wouldn't. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't. I'd rather play Fire Truck Simulator or whatever it was. <laughs> Absolutely, who wouldn't? But uh, they didn't really give much more information. They just said 15 in the first year. So, But that's cool. Like, I mean, It is cool. <clears throat> I know That's a good start. The... Everyone's worried about Microsoft and their exclusives, right? There aren't very many. And now they've said there's 15. Exact. Exacto mundo, sir. Don't forget though, uh, one of them sports a four, five, six, whatever. Four, four's a five. Yeah, which we already know. So that's fourteen that we don't know about. Sure. Um, I can only speculate. Size. Specular montification. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, well, it, the, the, I mean, uh, we'll we'll, we'll get to the sort of the new games yeah. that they've announced like very shortly, but. 
Uh, since since this reveal, um, just to sort of mix it up a bit, there have been a couple of announcements um, concerning this new console, one of which is that it is not backwards compatible. Oh. Um, Disappointing for me, but, you know, not the end of the world. No, I don't. Th- I think we all knew that it wasn't going to be um, yeah. at this point. Uh, but... Um, <sighs> You know, you, you, thing is, you the we'll all have you know, the opportunity to rebuy the games. Um, yeah, ten months down the line, uh, they're going to re HD their HD games. <laughs> true HD, yeah, <laughs> HD 3D, Megla CD, <laughs> Megla CD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure where I was going to go after that either. I'm glad you said something. Uh, Otherwise, I would have sounded like a <laughs> so uh, like a like a. Uh, Oh, <laughs> oh <fuck. laughs> like a <laughs> ah! Don't throw it at me. Okay. Um. So uh, another th- uh, rumor that has been debunked is that uh, Xbox, the Xbox, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> now. when I go down to the room. That's a different song, isn't it? That's oh, yeah. the only yeah, is it? <laughs> so um. <laughs> it doesn't require an always online. Huzzah! Basically, um, yeah. I mean, it may have had it at one point. I think it. I think they. Wa- I think they wanted to put it on there. Sure. Yeah. But obviously, uh, the community was dead set against it, and uh, quite rightly so. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it, it, obviously, it's. Des- Designed to be connected to the internet, it's going to be greatly enhanced if you do with all this sort of functionality that it has. But I think you know the, the language they were using throughout the press conference, uh, saying things like you know always con- that they were connected was dropped a lot. Yeah. I don't know. They said connected puns. about twenty times. Yeah. yeah. And the and the new experience they said a lot. New experience they said magic a lot and science like more than like all the Harry Potter novels combined. Combined. <laughs> And they said science a lot as well, and I feel like they were trying to wow us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I There's remember when we, when we were watching it, we we, we were laughing, like yeah. s- talking about like Locke and Jack from Lost yeah. and stuff, and yeah, it was it was it was really weird. But <clears throat> there was like a lot of buzzwords in there that was press a conference. Lot. But it's a press conference; you've kind of got to expect it. Absolutely. Yeah. Buzzwords, magic, science. I'm a douchebag. Here's the new Xbox. Suck my balls. That was the conference. That was pretty much that. I mean, so verbatim. Don't bother watching it. Yeah, that is exa- well, That is what they just. That literally. That was what it. They said. That was it. And uh, many balls were many balls. sucked with. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That's my voice. Well, many balls. Many balls. <laughs> Uh, so gamer scores will be ported over to the Xbox. He he he! I didn't know this. Yep, new information coming to light. Uh, so which does uh, that include- along with your gamer tag, your avatar, and such? Which is that's cool. I'm yeah. I'm happy about that. But yeah. um, it shows I'm like, indifferent. I know I know how you stand on this already, but um, it shows quite a clear um, different like quite. a Quite a different approach to how Sony have said, right, get rid of everything we did before. Have they said that, for sure? I'm pretty sure they have. I'm pretty sure they've said, you know, you can have your, your pseudonym, you know, you can have your, your little <clears throat> nickname. nickname. But I assumed you know. that they were going to port over that profile and Maybe... your nickname would still be the same as it ever was. Oh, but okay. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I jumped to conclusions with that but it, even so maybe you jump the gun <laughs> is that the tag song I mean, it, could I, be. it should be yeah. <laughs> it sounds like one <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> what the hell that's alright I'm really sorry about all this Metallica stuff we'll just stop talking about that I just never realised you'd love Metallica stuff. I fucking hate Metallica you love Metallica they are shit they are the best they're rubbish I don't like them they're so fucking boring. I, I actually saw them once. Um, so did I, and I think I actually fell asleep. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed them. They do put on a hell of a show, but they're fucking boring. I would never listen to them outside of a concert. No, they were... They... A concert? A concert! I saw them in concert! I, I've seen them live twice. Once it was a Reading festival. Did they play that one? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> they played that one a few times. I think so, <laughs> 
<laughs> Imagine if one of their albums was just called like. <laughs> Didn't even like go into a new line with the text. It just went off. Yeah. <laughs> or, or like the whole album is just like letters, just from left to right, left to right. No, 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 no. Bad news though. Um, Xbox One will not function without the Kinect attached, which is retarded. Indeed, indeed. In the, d- I guess you could put. A piece of cardboard over the lens, if you were that fuss. Oh, well, in case it was spying on you. I don't think that it is spying on I you. I know that in the morning you like to do your naked yoga <clears throat> with the whirlwind and the squat thrusts. Yeah. And such. And the whirlwind squ- squat thrusts. The, I call them the helicopter squats. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, no, I, I see that. I, like, like, I haven't seen it, but I, I, I can... Well, I can show you. That. Go on, then. Okay, if Connect uh, 2.0 is flawless, you know, if it really works as seamlessly as they, as they, as they should, <coughs> and they really have righted all the wrongs from before, then I can possibly forgive it. But if it's going to be f- doing stupid things all the time and re- reacting to my facial expression or something and then shocking me in the ass, then I'll love it. <laughs> And then I'll, then I'll hate it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hate it. He'll, I, 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 he'll no, hate I just, it all the way to orgasm. Town. I don't want rogue connect things going off. No. I, you know, what if I'm sat there with my headset on, chatting away? Do we still need a headset? I assume so. Yeah. So I'm sat there nabbering away. Nattering. Nabbering. Nabbering. Yeah, it's a new word. Okay. To you, on Halo Twenty Nine. 29. Yeah. Because they're going to have 29 halos Probably. before this is done. Um, uh, and I say, oh, God, this new Xbox, off on one. I don't know what that means. But I might say that. <laughs> you might. Or I might be talking to you um, and I might say, um, getting off now, guys. I'm tired. No, no, you might say that to me. Right. I, I I would say to you, oh, getting off now, I'm very tired. And I might be like, oh, I'll see you tomorrow to play some Xbox. Good night. And then it turns off. Mate, that would be fucked up. It wouldn't be just fucked up. My Xbox One would be fucked up. I would fuck it up. I would smash it up with my <laughs> cock. <laughs> like a woodchuck with a mighty slasher. <laughs> For some reason... <laughs> I don't know. I think this we, is what happens. This is we need Tom. Beers and no we need Tom, Tom here <laughs> to stop us from going on these crazy, crazy. We we're blaming Tom for these tangents, and it's been us. Uh, the uh, yeah, I think so. We're always going. Uh, yeah, Tom. We're like Tom. You, you just go off on one. You just talk about some stupid shit. It's us. It's us. <laughs> okay, so the possibly the biggest event uh, this fortnight in in gaming. Um, and we're just talking about and we're just we're just talking just, a load of crap. We are talking bullshit, and we're sitting here covered in streamers and ribbons and fucking party poppers and semen stupid and s- uh, semen <laughs> and just just like I, I'm a, oh no oh there I go Fuck. there I go. So uh, my summary uh, <laughs> presentation my summary. was disappointing. Presentation but the hardware was looks good. Hardware does look good in a lot of ways. <clears throat> Um, a lot of the uh, vicious rumours have kind of been neutralised. Before right, before we probably sum up, I was just going to say one last bit of information is that the Xbox has mandatory game installs, which does not bother me because I do that anyway. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't really bother me. Um, no. The only thing is... It's the PlayStation got... does it, right? Yeah, and... it does. The only problem is uh, it's only got 500... Uh, gigabyte hard drive Ooh, but we could have done with a terabyte that's true that is true but but at the same time um, the, the uh, install data is saved separately to the saved game data as yeah, as in so the you can, you can you can delete it so you can uninstall a game but still have your game saved but that's there. a 
that's still a pretty. I know it's a hassle, right? Yeah. Stupid hassle. I, I know why they're doing it. You know, I understand why they're doing it. <clears throat> there are plenty of benefits to installing your game, which is why I do install most of my games, especially now that they are kind of pushing the 360 more so than the release titles we're doing. Um, it's almost mandatory to do it now. So it's not. It's not. A, it's not. A, I'm not really that fussed about it. <clears throat> it's not a big deal, but it's just but, a bit you know, of an inconvenience. And like you know, the, you never know. They might have more than 500. Like that might. They might have a tiers. What they didn't announce, to my knowledge, is whether external memory will work with it. I assume so. I mean, they've got the USB 3.0, so they've got the fastest USB ports. Known to man. Known to man. <laughs> uh, I, hopefully you'll be able to use a USB external hard drive and none of that will be a fucking yeah, issue. I, I think it. USB 3.0, that's where you can fit three separate USBs into one slot. Is that right? <laughs> no? You're just looking at me? You're looking at your hands now? So, um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, the, the, unfortunately, the conference for me went downhill uh, the further it went along. It, it started off not exactly with a bang, but the hardware seems pretty cool. I don't have any real issues with anything. If Connect's going to work seamlessly, I'm up for waving my hands around a little bit. New controller looks cool. Um... It was just a bit disappointing that we didn't really get to see any cool games. We got a really small, quite cryptic glimpse of Quantic Dream. Uh, no, Quantic, it wasn't Quantic Dream. That's uh, Quantum. Uh, Quantic oh. Dream is the developed place. That's how tired I am. No, yeah. I get it. I get it. Quantum yeah, Break. Just, Quantum yeah, Break. Quantum Break. Right. Uh, just, just quickly to to go over the games. Um, uh, the the games that were shown were few and far between. The most interesting of which clearly was. Uh, Quantum Break by Remedy, who've done uh, Max Payne, <clears throat> the first two, and uh, more, more recently, recently Alan Wake yep. on uh, on the Xbox 360, and they didn't really give away too much, um, but it had sort of part live action, part rendered graphics, which um, looked fantastic. I thought actually, yeah, that it, graphically, like, yeah, it was really cool, um, but it's you know, I mean. It's a completely new IP by the look of it. I mean, there's really not that much to say about it. There was there a, really big sh- a big ship yeah. crash. Um, it's a new IP, so just keep an eye out for it. I expect there'll be more at E3 for that. Mm-hmm. Um, the other games that we saw was Forza Motorsport 5, which has been confirmed. Mm-hmm. Looks nice. Yeah, it had cars in it. Boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was that. I think and, the um, I think they made uh, quite an emphasis on the lighting and the reflections. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, both of which exist in, in real life. In real life. Mm. Um, and now in video much games. like cars. Cars uh, as exist well. In or, real or, life. Or, so I've heard. I mean, I have yet to see one, but. Mm. You know. uh, and uh, lastly, Call of Duty Ghosts was shown, and um, they had a lovely dog, a really nice I, dog. Uh, that dog. That dog was really dog-like. I mean, they've been talking about bringing something new to the series for a long time, and obviously, a dog. Who would have thought of that? Well, they have had dogs in previous Call of Duty. This is, this is, this is the most doggiest dog of all the dogs that I've. We actually seen. saw footage of uh, the mocap <laughs> of them the mo- mo- mocapping a dog. Yeah. yeah, it was that was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was cool. Like, I I wouldn't have thought they would have bothered. No, no, but seriously, though, the, the new Call of Duty look cool. I, I just am not overly interested. I... And, and <laughs> it just looks so bulk standard to me. So um, they said that there's going to be a focus now on the characters that you play as. Um, yeah, it's going to be more of a personal story. More a personal it. story. You're playing an underdog in a time where America is no longer... You know, in the, control. The, like, from yeah. what it sounds like, America's going to be invaded by some sort of external threat, and you are the remnants of the special forces fighting against them in a guerrilla warfare type some thing. Some crappy story, though. Sounds is. like Homeland. Yeah. Uh, Maybe it'll be cool. I'm sure it'll be better than Homeland, but. <clears throat> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's Call of Duty. It's, there's exclusive DLC coming to Xbox One. Timed. 
Uh, yeah, time DLC, obviously, and, you know, it's coming out for the launch of the console, which will be at some point. <laughs> this year? This year, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say this year. So what month are we on now? Fifth. So in the next seven months. Uh, yeah, yeah. It'll, I'm sure it'll be out by November for sure. So, <clears throat> um, And, you know, just quickly, I'm going to run through. Uh, since the Xbox announcements were made, a bunch of games have been confirmed for it. Uh, Assassin's Creed 4 mm-hmm. um, is one of them. Um, Battlefield 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, Destiny, obviously. Bungie's new uh, Filthy Love Baby is coming to the console. Good stuff. Um, uh, Thief. Of course, oh. uh, from Idos Montreal. I'm um, very much looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, love Deus Ex. Same, same guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Human uh, Revolution. And I'm a huge fan of the series, so can't yeah. wait to see it all come together. Uh, Watch Dogs also. Uh-huh. Um, and the last thing that we have yet to discuss is uh, a Halo TV project that was also announced um, mid press conference. Uh, really bizarrely yeah very very strange I just uh, if anyone has said to me what do you predict uh, from the Xbox uh, reveal the last thing I, that I would have said is a Halo TV series yeah or an Uncharted TV series that probably would have been the written last or, or directed or produced uh, involve has the involvement basically of... yeah it has the involvement of uh, one uh, Stefan Spielberg Stefan I think it's pronounced Spialberg. Spialberg. Yeah, Stefan Spialberg. I um, think is the correct pronunciation. I mean, if you want to, if you want to be sort of a, a stick in the mud, Steven Spielberg, I suppose, would well, suffice. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but... it's terribly <laughs> Um So uh, old uh, Stefan uh, will be involved in it with some. I mean, it, I, did you see Forward Under Dawn? Yes, I did. And, uh, and I thought it was really good. I really liked it as well. And a Halo TV series, while brilliant, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it. If that's if that's on Xbox, I will watch it for I'll sure. Definitely watch it. But, you know, I mean, I just don't think that's really what we're I don't think for. Spielberg's going to tie his name to something that he doesn't have, um, that he doesn't think is going to do him credit. I know that he's pretty untouchable in that regard. You know, he's released some... I don't know, man. Like the, the last few things that he's been involved in haven't been hugely amazing, in my opinion. Well, the thing in is, my opinion, he's been doing it a long time, and he's done some pretty shitty things to some of his, even his own beloved film franchises, and he's got away with it. You know, yeah. you could still say Spielberg. People would go, yeah. Oh yeah, but know. I think for for me, like Spielberg, it's synonymous with my childhood. Jurassic Park, mm-hmm. fucking. Indiana Jones, E.T., e. Exacto Mondo, Goonies. Yeah, he, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, uh, he, he's a, he is a god among men, even if he did completely fucking... Fuck them all up. Roger Indiana Jones in the uh, A-hole. Yeah. What surprises me a lot with, with <clears throat> Spielberg's, um, you know, interest is that he has said in the past that sci-fi, fantasy, sort of, that sort of setting is not his... Not his bag. He's not really good at it. To be fair, he... he, He's always put Lucas forward for that sort of thing. Yeah, well, he did um, that sci-fi series recently, Falling Skies, on uh, TNT. Yeah, it's not good. It's it's fine. The production was was awful. Like, some of the special effects were laughable. It it looked so dated. It is TV. Yeah, but you can say it is TV, but Forward Unto Dawn, which had a much, much lower... um, Budget. Budget. was so tastefully done and it looked great yeah well they opted for more of a sort of alien vibe where you didn't really see it that much yeah and then when you did see it it was fleeting and but it, it was good you it know. still looked really yeah, good yeah it did look good <clears throat> anyway it, I mean I mean this isn't a really big deal but like I'll, I'll definitely watch a Halo TV show but I just wish they'd showed us more fucking games you know I do but you know three weeks until E3, E3. Sure. and if they had come on stage and spaffed all over us and blown their load early, and come E3 and they had nothing but yeah, well, hello you shit, know, I mean, pissed off at them then. And I, what you got to remember is PlayStation E3, may well have done that. For all we know, they might have just totally just like jizzed like way too early. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just gave me a fucking face then. Uh, it's just that there's a lot of jizz and cock. And- <laughs> Tom, Tom's not here to keep us in line. Yeah, so carry on. 
Uh, I'm just saying, like, PlayStation may well have... Um, we don't know, you know, at the moment, all we can do It's all is... speculisation. Yeah. All, yeah. <laughs> all we can do is analyse what we've been told so far and... But, you know, I mean, so, so if you were to sum up this press conference, mm-hmm. what, would you, what would you say? I would say hardware looks great. I concur. Um, a lot of the things that I, wor- I was worried about, um, I don't need to be worried about anymore. Sure. Um, it's really great news to hear that there are eight new IPs on the way that are exclusive. Um, it was disappointing to hear that they don't seem to have expressed um, any support for indie developers. Yeah. Um, which I think could be a massive... <coughs> Um, a sticking like, point within the community, right? Yeah, but again, we've got how many new titles exclusive? To be fair, they they didn't say anything about that, but it was a much more it, their their press conference was way more sort of succinct and condensed than Sony's, and they may say more about that in the near future. It's not to say that they're not going to do it. It's no. they really just focus on the hardware. I mean, they only showed a few games, right? And we, we, we barely mentioned they showed FIFA. Well, they showed a few they EA sports games, EA sports, like FIFA, Madden. hockey, Madden, yeah. UFC. Like, I'm sorry, guys, but it's just we just don't know. Fuck. We don't we know. Don't, I we don't, don't know care. anything about them. No. We don't care. Um, we don't care. And know. then we saw, like, Call of Duty. We saw a bit of this new Remedy game, which is the only one that really piqued my interest. And even then, <clears> you know, you could see that in a lineup of... Yeah, and, like... Yeah, none of these demos were interesting. Like the Call of Duty one was boring as fucking shit, and like, and it was probably as nearly as long as the rest of the fucking conference put together. Like, it, it, was, it was, it, you know, as a conference, I don't, I didn't rate it. But again, like, like you said, the hardware, I am really digging. Apart from how angular and sort of, but as it works. Yeah, aesthetically, I'm not like super say, happy. Yeah. I, the controller, I'm very happy with. I am, yeah. Uh, but the 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 console and the Connect unit look incredibly uh, sharp edged and boxy, boxy indeed. But you know, you're going to be looking at the controller the most, or that's exactly. what's going to be lying exactly. around your house. I just room. wish that they kind of modelled it a bit more after the controller, you know. But like, mm. fuck it, you know. But how but it looks is how it looks. How it, yeah, day, it the, doesn't matter. The it's like it's like it's are a relief. You know, we've had a lot of. A lot of rumours have been stamped on now. Maybe there won't be so much yeah, Xbox back. You know, it's not always online. Yeah. Uh, the Kinect is included. And even though it has to be connected, you know, fuck it. Like, it, it, it's built in, right? So, <clears throat> or not built in as such, but it's included, packaged in. And we didn't see any games. But it was a hardware, hardware you know, it was unveiling the new Xbox. It yeah, was I mean, we, we, we did see games, but not ones that we really wanted no. to see. It was a different take to the Sony... Uh, yeah, I think maybe so, that's what they needed to do. So. Uh, yeah, I mean they focus more on it being the center of the living room, and I guess that's what they're mm. what they're going for. But I mean, let's be honest, we're both going to end up with both consoles. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Let's just wrap this up with uh, the gaming chart quickly. Uh, so first in the chart is Metro Last Light. Uh, second is Dead Island Riptide. Uh, FIFA 13 in third. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Infinity is in fourth. What brilliant That name. sounds disturbingly pornographic. <laughs> um, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 is in fifth position, followed by Tomb Raider. The Walking Dead, uh, Telltale's Walking Dead, oh, good. is in seventh, which, oh, okay. uh, which is strange, really. Uh, I guess the, 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 the retail game is finally... I still need to play it. Oh, God, yeah, you do. You yeah. really should. Um, Injustice Gods Among Us is in 8th. 9th, uh, Assassin's Creed 3. And 10th, Bioshock Infinite. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, like that's a good haul, really. There's some good games in there. Uh, some old, trusty, you know, always show up games too. But, you know, pretty good. So, as for new releases, uh, Dust 514 came out on uh, May the 14th. And... Uh, this one is going to take a while to review because it's you know it's free to play first person shooter, hugely involved mm. in Eve. It's it's going to take a while, so there there aren't uh, really? a lot of reviews out at the moment. But it, I mean, the ones that there are seem fairly positive. So cool. 
I think we're going to have to wait on that one. I'm definitely going to download it and give it a shot. It's free to play on the PS3, so, you know. There's no reason not to. Exactly. Uh, Metro Last Light came out on the 14th. Uh, uh, it's got a meta score of 80 uh, oh, okay. at the moment, uh, so it's pretty good. Like Everyone's pretty much unanimous that it's better than the first. I've heard about sort of some questionable AI, but really nice graphics, a bit dodgy voice acting, but, you know, fun gameplay. It's kind of a bit of a toss-up, but, you know, 8 is a good score. Good, so very good score, man. So, yeah, that, that's pretty positive. Uh, uh, soon, uh, the next game to come out will be Resident Evil Revelations, uh, which originally was a DS game, now coming out for Xbox 360, PC, and PlayStation 3, as well as the Wii U, in fact. So. Oh, well. Yeah, I know. It's oh, got a game. I know. Uh, but it's got a 76 meta score, nine positives, five mixed. From what I've heard, it's it's one of the better Resident Evil games in recent years, but the port up does emphasize its flaws as you might expect. Yeah, okay. So, you know, I mean, it's good, but don't expect miracles. And uh, towards the end of the month, on the 28th, uh, Fuse is coming out. Uh, obviously there's no reviews in for that one yet but you've heard what we thought earlier um, I'm sure it'll be cool and I think it's one of those games that would benefit from being played in co-op basically yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'll be a lot more fun that way so if you want to contact us Email us at videogamerspodcast at vxm.me and uh, visit our, please visit our Facebook page at uh, facebook.com forward vxm video games podcast. Mm. Uh, we have had some interesting stuff on there lately. We've been posting all sorts of memes and yeah. Tom's uh, posted Xbox drinking games and all sorts on there and, and you know, bingo and. It'd be nice to see a bit of activity on there. You know, we're away for two weeks between each podcast. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Uh, feels like we've been talking for two weeks. It really at does. At this point, it, I... it is like one a.m. I think we're we're both absolutely knackered. But tweet at us in our sleep deprived state at Rob Gisby at T Cule Design at Ant Polaroids. Um, you know, t- tweet Tom and say, "Oh, congratulations on getting married and being old and mm. fucking." being grown up and getting a house and <laughs> all that stupid shit that they do. <laughs> Hopefully oh. we'll have him back with us. Oh yeah, he'll be back uh, for next episode. Next episode. He's going uh, to Italy uh, oh, his on his honeymoon. Um, I, I can't remember where. Near a volcano. <laughs> Mount Doom, I think it's called. Mm, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's like really close to Mordor. <laughs> um, so. uh-huh. <laughs> you look so tired, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I... All of a sudden... My like brain the, looks like the table. Yeah, oh, no, you should see it. Like, feels like in fact, we, we, I'll take a picture of it and I'll embed it in the podcast because it is fucking pathetic. Like mm. streamers, party poppers, fucking blowers. <laughs> like, it's bullshit. Uh, we've even got a cake, in fact, which we are going to eat after this. Oh, God. Oh, don't do it, Ant. Don't, oh, he's triple threatening me with these... Don't. Party poppers, don't fucking point those at me, son. Oh! <laughs> Oh, you son of a bitch. I swear these party poppers are defective. They're like fucking they, burning me. They're the worst. They are. <laughs> How's the price? So. Oh, dear. We made it through uh, we, without Tom. We, we did. We made it through without Tom, but it's it's been... Completely disjointed and it, nonsensical. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Tom, if you're listening to this, come back to us. Yeah. We needed you more than we realised. You can be a hero, <laughs> baby. <laughs> In a James Hatfield Metallica way. You can kiss away the pain of it. <laughs> you could be our Xbox One, Tom. That what dumb name. I know. Stupid. You are my Xbox One and only. Rob. Thank you, Anthony. Say something <sighs> nice about me now. I think you are... Uh, not... Unattractive. Uh, your personality doesn't sicken me all the way to my stomach. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are quite tall. Mm. You know, if I didn't know any better, I think you were trying to seduce me. <laughs> <laughs>
And on that sexual note, <laughs> let's fucking pack this oh, in. God, Tweet God. Tom. Happy wedding, Tom. Happy um, wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Happy wedding, you tall bastard. <laughs> save us some fucking cake, will ya? You bet you better save us some cake. Yeah. You Speaking of that. cake, yeah. let's get on it. I've got fucking ten candles for this ten episodes. That's how much we care. <laughs> <laughs> or I care. Ad's just looking at me like oh, I'm a fucking asshole. <laughs> oh, see you guys. <laughs> Kisses. Silly sausage, silly sausage. Silly sausage, silly sausage. Silly. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. I'm not a pheasant plucker, I'm a pheasant plucker's son, and I'm only plucking pheasants till the pheasant plucker comes. <laughs> what noise? A noise, an oyster. A noisy noise, a noise, an oyster. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs>